Hello everyone and welcome to RPG Limit Break 2023. Are we ready for our next run? It's a run that features squish mallows and geno beams, frog coins and freebies, best boy booster and whatever bellum is supposed to be. That's right, it's time for Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars with your runner, Milnium. Hey guys, my name is Milnium. Welcome. Um, here's my commentator, Claude Pitch. They'll be doing most of the talking today. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna get started. Is there a, what's the uh, name, file select? So uh, we've had a lot of donations come in and it has been sniped and then sniped and then sniped again. Um, you thought it was gonna be Pain Man and then Just Incredible came in with the donation I'll get to. <laughs> and then the final name with $235 is Beanie. Oh my God. Beanie. B-E-E-N-Y. B-E-N-Y? B-E. Oh. B E E N Y. E Y? Oh, no, that's not it. Huh? B, <laughs> B E E N Y. Oh. E. Oh, what? Dude. Uh, How do you do files? Like, yeah. Strong start. We usually do this to LCC. <laughs> Look, we don't know how to input any letters that aren't LCC. <laughs> there you go. That's it. That's yeah. it. So we're just. We did it. We did it. We're just gonna we're gonna do timing off of file select. Normally, normally we do reset. So uh, yeah, it's gonna start on uh, on done. So um, y'all ready? Um, Who's ready? Yeah. yeah. Y'all ready? Let's go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Good luck, Mel. Thanks. Good luck, Mel. We Thank believe you. in you. Thank you. All right, so welcome to Super Mario RPG. Uh, if you've never played this game before or have never even seen it before, you might have lived under a rock for the last 27 years, but you are in for a real treat. This game uh, was coming off of the heels of a series of Mario platformers, so they opted to start the game where most Mario platformers ends. You were rescuing Peach from Bowser. Um, Claude and I uh, commentated this run together uh, for Just Incredible's run at AGDQ 2019. Shout out to Just Incredible, by the way. I heard he got a donation in. Um, we're going to be starting this run off strong with um, RNG manipulation that saves about 18 seconds. What Mill's going to be doing here is um, trying to time his attacks to have the RNG counter make it so that each of the Terrapins that he fights skips their turn. They have a 2 out of 3 chance of attacking you, a 1 out of 3 chance of just doing nothing. We're going to try and manipulate it so that none of them do anything and save us a little bit of time. Additionally, he's going to be using the uh, Mario's jump attack. Every time he uses the jump attack, his damage goes up a little bit with that attack, and it's primarily used in the early game on uh, the bosses. Not quite, but that's Three fine. punch, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. You can get anywhere from zero to six punches in this fight, depending on your RNG. So we got three. It's like somewhere in the middle. Yeah, ideally you want one or zero. Zero is very hard, but that's a two-frame window. That uh, that manip is pretty hard, and we say in the wiki, do not reset over this, especially in low level. <laughs> like, we promise you there are much worse things in store for you than 18 seconds on Terra Just play the game. Take the punches to the face. There we have that lovely Super Mario Bros. 3 music remix a little bit. Um, like Claude said, every time you use jump, it powers up permanently for the rest of the game. That is a little known side effect of Mario's basic jump attack that is not actually explained anywhere in the game. But one thing that you'll notice with SMRPG is that um, as Mill is doing these attacks, he did 36 damage and now he's going to do 37 damage. That is not RNG. There is no RNG on spells in Super Mario RPG. The damage is entirely deterministic. That change in damage came from his counter going up from how many times he has used jump in the game so far. So that is going to be how we do most of our damage with Mario in the early game. Yeah, it's also advancing the text here by doing uh, D-pad rotations. In, uh, in battle, text like that can be advanced with like any button, but uh, the actual text uh, like dialogue, but can only be advanced with uh, one button. 
Um, this might actually be a good, a good time for a couple donations. The start of the game is very cutscene heavy. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Speaking of just incredible, uh, $200. Wow. Greetings to my SMRPG colleagues from my old Kentucky home, and good luck, Millennium. <laughs> for a time in recent years, I too suffered with mental illness, and now that things in life are improving slowly, I'm pleased to donate to this cause. The file name is my name and Bep, aka Vernie. I'm gl I'll gladly share the file name incentive with his name as well. On a side note, I expect Pidge to drop all kinds of trivia during the run, as she has done so every day on Twitter until the upcoming remake. Dutch Glow. P.S. I'm so sorry to all the Pain Man supporters. I'm a Pain Man supporter, but it's okay. I forgive you, Justin. Thank Shout you, Justin. out to Justin Incredible. We love that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, $25 from Oglib. Good luck, Mill. $10 from Lone Weasel. I'm donating again because Final Fantasy IX and SMRPG are awesome. You should donate because Nami is awesome, and everyone should give it up for the runner staff and volunteers here because they are awesome. Here, Mario falls into his pipe house. True. Very conveniently located pipe house. <laughs> The placement of the sprites in this game is just, everything about this game is just very slapstick uh, visual comedy. Yeah. With a fantastic script as well. The English version was, the localization is just awesome. There's two options for what you can do here. You can either just leave immediately or you can save to skip some dialogue. It's always faster just leave right here, even on English. Uh, the English text wastes uh, about eight and a half minutes or so compared to Japanese. You almost always do uh, runs of this game on Japanese because it's faster and there's no other version differences. But for marathons, you're always going to play on English, of course, so people can follow along. Today, I'll remember if I can read. So <laughs> I don't have to read this game normally. So. Something really bad has happened. There's a giant sword in Bowser's <laughs> castle that wasn't there before. So uh, we are not going to be able to go back in there and see if Peach is still there. And that causes a whole lot of problems in the Mushroom Kingdom. This is not how I remember most other Mario games ending before this. All right, Mill, you ready for tutorial skip? Oh, yeah. I'm never ready for tutorial skip. So Mario was um, kind of a play on the silent protagonist trope in this game where he doesn't say anything, but he just like wildly pantomimes everything to tell his stories. Um, sometimes levitating into thin air to show how uh, Toad that the bridge is broken, and we'll see more of that later. Puts on many costumes. He certainly does. You know about timed hits, Mel? Oh. A little bit. Okay. That's all you gotta know about. A little, worry, a little worrisome in the warm up. <laughs> he knows about timed hits. You better watch out. He'll punch your lights out. So the first area of the game that we're heading off to is Mushroom Way. Mushroom Way is pretty straightforward. It's more or less a straight line through three rooms. Mill's going to collect a couple small items here. Uh, we see Toad has been cornered by a Goomba. We're not going to rescue him. We're going to avoid these uh, treasure chests as well. Sorry, Toad, but it takes too long to rescue you. And he'll this... be picking up a flower. The flower uh, increases your total FP. FP is like the source of uh, magic you, you can use in this game that is shared across all party members. It's very important because you're primarily just going to be using uh, magic for like the first uh, 40 minutes or so of the game. Now one thing to note about when you collect a flower in the overworld and increase your FP is that it doesn't actually restore your FP. So you'll see Mill has 10 out of 11 and he has a, you start off with 10, he grab one flower, but it doesn't replenish your FP to match your new maximum. So you kind of gonna have to watch out for that sometimes in this run. And here for the Hammer Brothers fight, he's uh, spreading out his damage because if he takes one of them out, the other one powers up. So you want to do as much damage as possible uh, early on before that happens so you can take them out quickly. So this boss battle is a pretty good demonstration of how the time hit system works. Um, you'll see a couple times Mill has taken zero damage from those bonks on the head he got. The way that he managed to do that is that um, this game has uh, action command time hit system where most attacks that you can do as well as a lot of attacks that are done by enemies, you can press a button at a certain 
range of frames to alter how much damage you do or how much damage you take if you're blocking enemy attack. To block an attack perfectly to take zero damage is about a five frame window. So on, uh, on a Super Nintendo, that is about one twelfth of a second. And uh, when he's doing a timed attack, most of the time it's about seven frames to hit it perfectly. If you miss the seven frames just barely, you'll do one and a half times damage. But if you get the two, um, you do it perfect, then you'll get two times damage. All right, here Mill is buying some uh, small items to help him throughout the run. He's also buying some uh, armor here. His shirt will let him tank uh, one attack uh, from the upcoming boss. And uh, he's also buying the jump shoes, which increases his damage with jump a little bit. And he also bought uh, six honey syrups, which will restore his FP, three able juices, which will cure status effects, and three pick which will revive characters. And here we have everybody's favorite treasure chest in the game, the only hidden chest that is permanently missable. Um, you have to jump on Toad's head at that point in the cutscene to get up on top of the door. When Toad approaches the door, it flips a bit that changes the terrain type above the door to one that can be jumped on instead of one that's insurmountable, and that treasure chest is up there. It stays up there for the rest of the game, so later on when you find out that there is a treasure chest in that room, you can't get it. Um, even from the Toads that walk around in the room, even if they get up close enough to the door, they don't set the bit that flips the terrain so you can't jump up on top of it. Um, also, the beacon item that indicates that there is a, a treasure chest in the game is hard-coded into every room, so they didn't have to troll you, but they did anyway. <laughs> Another thing I want to mention is that Mill also equipped the hammer. The hammer will never actually be used in the run, hopefully, but it skips the uh, tutorial here that tells you about how to equip stuff. That's uh, why you do it. Yeah, nice little time save you can get from that. I nope. love this part. Mario is just so tired of listening to this guy, and this game is just absolutely dripping with sarcasm all over the place. <laughs> Fun fact about that hidden treasure chest, um, while you can jump on top of the door, all the doors in the room are actually broken, so <laughs> they made Toad open it for you to mask that fact. <laughs> Here's our favorite frog. Looks like a frog to me, yeah. I've seen I've seen frogs that look like white puffy marshmallows. <laughs> I've also played this game a lot, so that might be why. Mallow is having the worst day of his life. He just came into town to run an errand for his grandpa. Had a single frog coin to buy a a, a pie with, and um, it got stolen. It got stolen by a crocodile wearing crocodile skin shoes. He has no shame. <laughs> In a top hat. If you say no to Mallow here, he starts crying again, and then everybody in town just, like, wants nothing to do with you. They just start saying, like, wow, you're kind of a jerk, and... <laughs> They, they gave you the option to make Mario kind of a jerk in this game. They didn't need to, but they did. And they also made there be, like, some kind of social consequence for it. See these jumps here? This is actually moving the camera forward. There's a ton of like uh, little camera optimizations throughout the run, uh, but they don't really save that much. It's probably like 10 seconds worth of camera optimizations if you do all of them. But you know, it adds up. Yeah, to put that into perspective, um, what is the world record for this game again? 246 what? 246. 14 or 13 now? If, if Justin? Justin Credible is in chat, he'll know what it is. It's his world record. Yeah. I want to say it's 13 now. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, every little bit adds up, but it is uh, about a three-hour run. And that's, of course, on the Japanese version. Our estimate's a little longer because it's in English. Krago kind of talks like a 1940s gangster, and uh, we're going to chase him around Bandit's Way a bit. Bandit's Way is similar, uh, looks similar to Mushroom Way, but it's a bit more involved. There's more things you can do here. You start learning how to interact with platforms. Mill is going to be uh, skipping the coins above the platform because we don't really need them, and they also introduce a little bit of lag when you do grab them. Mm -hmm. Those coins would actually be kind of useful in this iteration of the route, but I'll talk about it more a little bit more of that uh, later. We also picked up the uh, Kara Kara Cola. That will not be used, but it will be sold for a lot of coins, 200 coins specifically. A large part of the early game of this run is just uh, picking up a bunch of items to sell them for attack items later on. Mm. 
Mill is going to be trying to do a really tricky jump here to get a second treasure chest. Additionally, he's going to be trying to take out uh, 13 of these canines. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was you. close. So he had to take out exactly 13 <laughs> canines in this route. Uh, any less, he would be one level lower for a critical boss later on. And one more canine would just mess up the XP route because he would get a pause during a future invincibility star. So that was really good. He got exactly 13. K9 was coming for me. That's a that's a fairly tricky jump to do. You have to line it up a certain way, and I think that um, when you jump on top of an enemy, you have about two to four frames, depending on where of, on their model you jump on them, to initiate your jump before it just knocks them off of the field. Catching Croco here is also kind of tough. Where he moves to is random, and kind of influence your time more than you would think. All right, so the first real boss of the run, Croco won. Uh, he's going to be defeating this boss primarily with jump attacks, only with jump attacks. Mal is going to be doing nothing except for restoring FP. Yeah, Mal doesn't really have a lot of whole offensive options very early in the game, and uh, we end up skipping the part of the game where you get his first weapon as well. So he plays largely a support role for the time that we use him in the run. That honey steer freebie is very important. Uh, you want to talk about the freebie system? Yeah, sure. Um, so with the freebies in this game, what a freebie means is that every time you use a consumable item within battle, you have a certain percent chance of the game just giving you another one of those items for free. So honey syrups and most items have about a 25% chance, roughly, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, that's correct. And when that happens, um, of course, you know, you have another honey syrup than you bargained for, and later on when you have to sell them, you get a little more money. The coin routing in this route is actually very tight, so it is nice to get some extra freebies. Yeah, the honey syrups are the best ones you can get because those sell for five coins. And later on in the game, we'll be seeing that a lot of the boss strategies for some of the late game bosses revolve a lot around um, freebies. If you have freebied certain damaging items, then you will be a lot faster in those boss fights than if you don't. I missed time to jump there, but got good luck. Okay. Timing a jump is about six frames, so if you miss time that, you do like. Jump is a little bit different. It does one and a half times damage on a perfect attempt, and 1.25 if you miss the six frame window by just a little bit. All right, there he's able to choose his level up. He also chooses it for Mario uh, early on after the Invincibility Star. Uh, every time you gain a level in this game, you can choose a stat buff You can that can go along with it. On uh, levels divisible by three, you get more attack if you choose that. And then a uh, level after that, you get more HP. Level after that, you get more magic attack. And it just cycles like that. So you try and optimize uh, how you pick your level ups there to get the best stat bonuses per level. Oh, hey, question to the host. Do we have any max skip related donations? <laughs> oh, my. I seem to have one right here. $20 from Pidge. <laughs> Mill said he'd do right side max skip if I donated 20 bucks. All right. Well, we're doing it. This is a treat. Right side max skip is like 2013 tech. <laughs> it's very hard. Oh, it's so laggy. I know. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! So, That's extremely laggy. <laughs> we'll explain that a little bit. Um, in SMRPG, you can't see it, but pretty much all over the floor in this room are tiles where when you step on them, you lose control of Mario and it forces him into a cutscene that starts a fight with Mac. Um, the game developers actually know, knew ahead of time that if you jump on top of one of those shy guys' heads, you could bypass those event tiles. So they stuck some invisible blocks there that will stop you from doing that. But those blocks are not tall enough to block you if you jump at just the right time. <laughs> um, so that's what. So skipping Mac has been part of the speedrun for a very long time. Um, about seven or eight years ago, LNM found a setup that uses the left side of the room, which is pretty much a standard for speedruns now. It's very easy to set up, lots of tutorials about it. If you want to learn how to do max skip, go on smrpgspeedruns.com right now and you can do it in like 10 minutes. Um, right side max skip, much harder to set up visually. I think of one person watching right now that'd be offended he said Alanim found the setup, but I won't get him that. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Alanim. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. It's just a, there's one person watching that's going to get it. <laughs> Who is it? Oh, oh well, okay. Claude won't tell me. 
that was before my time, so apologies if my information was incorrect. <laughs> Do you have time for more donations as you go through the sewer? I actually want to talk about this real quick. So this is a uh, part of the new route that Mill's going to be doing. This is normally you get the invincibility star here in the Karo sewers, but that's going to be skipped. This is the biggest uh, route change in the past like two or three years or so. Oh, it only saves about a uh, six to twelve seconds. All right, good. on the boot. Um, can you make the jump? Oh, oh wow! Yo, let's go! Uh, what is that? <laughs> Uh, I, I was so surprised. Uh, like I was gonna, I was gonna heal, but I was like, no. So that was the optimal strat to <laughs> jump on the boo, then run away, and then make it up there. It's a little bit of a skip, and he got it. I wanted he... to hit the box, okay? okay. You're not gonna... But you don't even need the. Box, I know right? you don't. You don't. But <laughs> muscle memory. Yeah. So yeah, he got it, showed it off, and then just went back to the other strat. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Bloom 1. This is uh, one of the most random bosses in the run. Uh, he has a lot of scripted actions, but his unscripted actions can waste a lot of time. And the worst thing he can do is put you to sleep. And if you do, that happens, you either have to let him wake you up with a physical or you have to use an able juice to wake up a character. Uh, the most important thing is what he does here on uh, his next turn, this one? Yeah, okay, physical, great. Uh, so it should be a smooth fight moving forward then. He's also going to be doing a different strat than uh, what's normally done here. He's going to be doing a strat that involves three honey syrups. That was in case he didn't get the canine jump earlier, which gave him an extra flower. And uh, the reason for that is if he didn't get that extra flower, he'd only have 11 FP and he wouldn't be able to finish the fight with uh, just jumps. So you had to plan around having uh, more flower points in case, uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Wow. And like Claude was saying, there is a new version of this route, which, um, as you can see, through skipping the star in the sewers and taking a new path to get to Balloon faster, that route was actually just released this morning. So that's um, an exciting new development in SMRPG history right now. Yeah, it was uh, pioneered by a runner named uh, Verney, aka Bep. Uh, they were running it for quite a bit now, but I finally went around and like documented everything, made sure you know everything was good to go. So should all be uh, out there now. Bep is also the world record holder for low level, which was um, broken very recently for the first time in seven or eight years. If you uh, wonder why you've never seen low level in a marathon, go look up a video and you'll see why. Okay, so Sleep's lost minutes there on uh, Mario, but it didn't matter because Scarecrow takes priority over Sleep, so mm -hmm. he's gonna be fine there no matter what. Yeah, that is an interesting thing about uh, statuses in this game. You can only have one at a time, and uh, the priority is based on um, which one has the highest bit in the status bite, and Scarecrow is the highest that a team member can have. That was a great fight. Yeah, that was good. He had actually scroll funked Mario again, which prevented him from getting slept there, so normally he'll uh, get turned back to normal right on that last turn. Yeah, yeah. Midas River. Nice, relaxing water park. Waterfall. Yeah, the SMRPG is just full of mini games. Just fun little concepts that they had. Mill's going to be collecting uh, frog coins here. He's going to try to get exactly 60 coins. Uh, when you get exactly 60 regular coins, they don't go in your wallet. You exchange them at the end for another frog coin. And uh, if you get exactly 60, you skip a text box. If you get more than 60, then you lose like half a second. Um, a little bit more on English. Oh yeah, in English I guess it would be more. <laughs> Something I learned recently about Midas River is that the game's director actually programmed this minigame himself, and uh, it's just like really obvious how much love this game's staff had for, had for it. Now would be a good time for donations, actually. For sure, we've got $45 from Countdown. Could you imagine if they remade this game? I'm so grateful my favorite community has come together again to celebrate such an amazing speed run. Super Mario RPG has come so far thanks to some incredibly talented folks, and I'm so happy it got another chance to shine on stage. Best of luck, Milna Mug. Can we get a random <laughs> Super Mario RPG fact from Pitch? Beanie. Um, yeah, let me think of one. Well, I feel like I just gave one, but uh, what's a good one? Okay, here's one that I posted recently. It is possible to do more than 10,000 damage in this game, and it displays incorrectly. If you do 100 super jumps on King Bomb with Mario's SP stat maxed out, Geno Boost with the best armor, it says M0802 or something like that. Um, I'll think of some more as the run goes on. 
I definitely never knew about that. $25 from Ampilux. Thanks to everyone involved for a wonderful week of runs. And $50 from BeanieFan2. BeanieFan2 here, just want to say, let's <laughs> go, Milnium. You got this. Beanie crews out in how many, full force. How many Beanie right? fans are there? There's like a thousand donations. <laughs> shout outs to Beanie. Also, big shout outs to Countdown. I love that guy. If there's any more donations, this is still a good time. We're in uh, level one of cutscene heck right now. <laughs> $25 from Jish. Good luck, Mill. Putting this donation towards distracting the gamer during the invisible enemy super jumps. Also, I'll be donating an additional $5 for each perfectly blocked dodo physical. <laughs> $25 from Nice Online. Shout out, Claude. Looking forward to 10,000 shipments and bopping those beanies. Don't forget to point out Pizza Tech this run, whatever it is, whenever it happens. Catch you next Mario-ish Monday. Can't wait to see which Mari Kuso is next. That's a good donation right there. <laughs> $100 from the Burning Hunter. Haven't been able to tune in all week due to work, but was not going to miss a run of Super Mario RPG. Good luck, have fun, and thanks to all the volunteers who keep the show running. $50 from Amadeus1005. I truly treasure the time I spent speedrunning this game. I'm here at RPG Limit Break to reminisce. Super jumps are hard. <laughs> they are. $8.75 from Sonny Rap 11 Let's go, Milnium. So hyped to see you running this and totally look forward to you dominating this run. Claude and Pidge, so happy to see you both there as well. May the freebies be in your favor. They already are. Mil, uh, three out of four items so far. <laughs> Mill, you can choose where the donation goes. Okay. Shout out to Sonny. Oh, another fun SMRPG fact. Uh, that scroll behind Frog Fuchsius is, uh, it shows a solution to the first Melody Bay minigame, which we're not going to be doing in this run. If you want to see what it is, just go watch my most of the stuff run from 2019. Um, if you read it, it says the notes in Melody Bay, so la, mi, re, do, re, do, re. It just straight up tells you what the notes are. In the Japanese version, however, it's actually a poem. It says, so la, mi, re, do, re, do, re. So, which means like, look at the, look, look at the sky. Where, where? And uh, that's like a little puzzle you have to solve to figure out the notes in Melody Bay. Wait, not a tadpole. Not a tadpole. What? I think I think these guys are all wrong. He looks like a frog to me. Yeah, it's got to be, right? He's got the little pink thing on his head like Frog Fuchsia does. He's definitely a frog. Yeah, weird. Some r pretty weird writing, I think. Yeah, maybe we'll fix that in the remake. Yeah. <laughs> That thing about the scroll I actually learned from my friend Phil House, who did like a whole translation comparison of this game in 16 parts. It's pretty awesome. All right, gonna be a shop coming up here. Mill is going to buy two items. Gonna buy the Sleepy Bomb, item that puts all enemies to sleep, and an Energizer, which permanently boosts the attack of uh, one character uh, for the duration of that fight. Uh, Sleepy Bomb will be used way, 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 way later on in the run. And Energizer will be used in the next boss fight. Now, that menu that Mill just did, um, that menu doesn't give you oh, the option to sell items or equip items or anything like that. That is a special shop that only accepts frog coins. Frog coins are a secondary form of currency in this game. They're all the green coins that you're going to see. They're a bit rarer. They are infinitely farmable. They're not a limited resource. They're just harder to come across. And you can buy some pretty special stuff with them. We will be um, collecting a lot of frog coins in anticipation of getting a very important accessory in Seaside Town. So you'll be seeing some frog coin farming shortly. Oh, well, I'll do an extra wiggler. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the coin round is very tight in this, so you could have gotten a little bit more coins there from the uh, chest there in, here in Rose Away. You could have gotten another large coin there, which are worth uh, 10 each, but opted to just go the normal. Well, I have uh, all those honey syrups, so I'm going to have a yeah, lot of yeah. money anyway, so just realize. Might be fine. Even if he's a little bit off coin route, it's not a huge deal. It's basically just to buy one extra attack item that will make a difference potentially on uh, one or two bosses. Heading to Rose Town because we heard they need their help. We discovered that Bowser is not actually in his castle anymore. What the heck is going on? 
Fun fact, it's not possible to get hit by Rose Town arrows. All right, here in the shop, they're picking up another flower, pick up frog coins, also be buying two fearless pins. A uh, fearless pin, as you might imagine, stops the fear status effect, which is a bad one because it increases the damage you take and also reduces the damage you deal out. And the fearless pin also boosts your defense, magic defense a little bit. So here, task bad. Whoa. <laughs> that was a little weird. <laughs> so I have no like, idea what task like, bad is. Look like task bad. Every time just you go in that room, get the frog coin, so it's task bad, but <laughs> I've never actually watched the, uh, the task for that portion. If there's any more donations, this is probably a good time for them. This is uh, just a little cutscene before we meet Gino. $25 from Demon Small Z. Happy birthday to anyone on the couch whose birthday it might be. Thank you, Demon. I miss <laughs> all of you. Good luck, Mill. When are you finishing Skies? Just a reminder that Claude should not be winning. He is an enemy of peace and justice and a force of evil in the universe. I hope you're all having a good RPG limit break. My birthday is actually tomorrow, but thank you, Demon. I appreciate you. <laughs> and $25 from Kurzov. The only bad thing about going so fast is that you miss out on this game's great OST. Gonna do the secret boss fight? Good luck on the run. Yeah, I'm Okira. <laughs> it is a secret boss. <laughs> Speaking of the secret boss, uh, the awesome t-shirts are back for another year, courtesy of the Yeti. That's Y-E-T-E-E. -E -E. The Yeti.com slash RPG Limit Break and the Yeti are donating $5 for each t-shirt sold to Nami. And if you haven't checked out the Super Mario RPG Kulik shirt, it is fire. My boyfriend got it for me as a birthday gift. It's really good. So this is where we meet um, one of the most uh, well-known characters in the Smash Bros. community. Uh, this is Gino. Um, Gino for Smash is like a 16 years running campaign. Uh, haven't lost steam for all those years and now SMRPG is getting a remake, so that's pretty cool. Um, this is just where the star spirit inherits him and then he's about to bonk his head on the stairs and decide he's good with this whole um, physical <laughs> uh, body thing and walks into the forest. If there's any more donations, we have time for another one or two. Yeah, I just want to point out that we have uh, one more incentive for Super Mario RPG. Um, we met the Super Jump on the Invisible Enemy challenge, and now we're going for an even more difficult Super Jump challenge, where everyone here will try to distract Milnium <laughs> as he attempts to Super Jump on an Invisible Enemy. <laughs> Uh, we are just uh, over $500 away, so if we could get that done by the time that that challenge is ready, I gotta be a part of that distraction. Okay. We're about to jump on some uh, wigglers for some uh, coin farming, so that save is extremely important. They can, if you get in a battle with them, they can uh, destroy you very fast. Yeah, those are absolutely, you know, do not want to- Very mean. It's just like SMW, don't make them mad. <laughs> yeah, so like Mill said, he's gonna be doing some wiggler jumps here. Uh, the idea is to jump on a wiggler 10 times for nine normal coins and one frog coin. Uh, we need to farm frog coins here in order to buy the an accessory uh, a little bit earlier than you used to in older routes. That's uh, very important for uh, leveling up the characters. And yeah, you definitely don't wanna drop. I think uh, normally you wanna do seven here, but I think Mill is gonna be doing eight to fix the coin route. So we'll see what happens here. This is kind of a gatekeeper tech for people learning how to speedrun the game, besides the obvious elephant in the room of super jumps. Um, Wiggler has, uh, I believe it's six different patterns that he can take around uh, the, the tree trunk, and you kind of have to react to him. And he moves very quickly, so you really have to have good control over Mario to land on the right spot. The, I the isometrics make this way harder than it needs to be. <laughs> it, that's, that's true. You gotta bounce on Wiggler 10 times before he goes back into the stump to get your frog coin. Yeah, I did develop a route that skips the Wiggler jumps, but I think it's a little bit slower, and you have to do some other, like, also even harder stuff, so it's kind of not really worth it. Mill is making this look really easy. This is not an easy tech to learn. I forget how many that was, but one more. <laughs> okay.
That's probably good, judged by the audio cue. Yeah, great. That's really good. No drops, uh, wiggler jumps. That's um, that's awesome. You love seeing that in a marathon run. Taking a stroll through the forest now. I don't know. Or box. <laughs> Tricky. Now, the arrows in this part of the game actually can hit you, and they make Mario look a little bit confused. But you don't see that very often in speedruns. Another cola here, again, just to sell for uh, coins later on to buy some attack items. And soon he'll be picking up the Red Essence. The Red Essence is a very powerful item that renders a character invincible for three turns. We use in a boss fight coming up in a little bit here. It also sells for a lot of coins too, so if he ends up freebieing that, it's uh, be pretty, pretty good. No safety save on Boyer, that's gutsy. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Maybe, maybe it's gutsy for people who are better at this game than I <laughs> So this is Boyer. Um, Boyer is, he's a really interesting boss. His main thing is that um, out of your three main command buttons, uh, special item and attack, he will lock one every two turns. So during the fight, uh, the way that the fight is routed is to um, manipulate the counter system he uses to make sure that he always locks the button that we want him to lock. And that's why you'll mostly be seeing Geno attacks in this fight and not much else from Mario Romello. Yeah, Gino is going to be doing uh, far more damage than the other two characters can do, so it's really not worth it to use anyone else. Additionally, he's going to be boosted in the fight uh, by using the Energizer, so he'll be doing even more damage. Gino is quite strong because you recruit him at level 6, and he's a higher level than anyone in your party currently is in the speedrun. Boyer's also kind of funny because like, his henchman just found this incredibly important star piece that is the whole reason he's here, and he tells him to get lost, I'm busy trolling people in Rose Town. <laughs> This is probably also a good time for donations. There's like a cutscene leading into this fight. Yeah, I've got a couple here. Six dollars from Katuria. Hey, Pidge, Katuria here. I just wanted to chime in and say, keep on being awesome. Here's one dollar for every level we had when we heroically defeated Bunt together at RPG Limit Break 2019. Donation goes to Pidge's Choice. Oh, awesome. In that case, I'd like to put it towards the outstanding incentive for this run. Thank you so much, Katuria. I'd love to see you again sometime. Yes, let's make it harder. Uh, $25 from Sangria. Hey, y'all. Good luck, Mill. And I just want to remind everybody why we are all here and what we are donating for. We are donating to NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. It's the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. NAMI provides advocacy, education, support, and public awareness to improve the lives of all individuals and families affected by mental illness. NAMI exists to ensure that no one is alone on their mental health journey. All right, so starting off this fight, like we were talking about earlier, we're going to be trying to manipulate uh, Bowyer's button locking. And the way that that works is that every two turns, um, he takes a tally of what actions you did during the last two turns. So A attacks have a certain amount of points, Y uh, attacks have a certain amount of points, X items don't edge of the counter at all. So he tries to guess which of those three things you did the most based on what threshold you pass with um, all of your attacks added up with each other. Um, for most of the fight, we're going to have him lock X, because when he locks X, he actually does not do an additional attack against you like he does when he locks Y and A. And it also just ensures that we can just keep attacking for the rest of the fight with Gino. Yeah, the attacks he uses also change. Um, if he locks another button, he can use Static E, which is a powerful AoE attack. Definitely don't want to see that. So he's only going to be using a single target magic damage and also physical attacks. And then towards the end of the fight, he has a chance to put a character to sleep, which is also not a big deal unless it hits Gino. Yeah, you don't want to see Lightning Orb on Geno, you want to see on the other two characters because the other two characters are basically useless. If all the attacks do end up hitting Geno, it's going to be kind of bad. Mm -hmm. 
That um, that energizer that we bought in Tadpole Pond is what is enabling Gino to do 90 damage instead of 30. Um, the energizer gives an attack up boost, which affects your physical attack, magic attack, as well as item damage, and it does one and a half times uh, for one and a half times the damage that you would normally do without it. That is not stackable with Gino Boost or Trooper Pin. It's just the same. All three of those things give you the same uh, status, so that's why we don't like buy multiple energizers or something like that. It's kind of rough, but uh, Gino's still yeah. alive, so. Pretty bad luck for them both to target Gina there. Hopefully he's kind on this turn. Please not Gino. Okay, <laughs> Pretty lot bad luck there to get uh, all spells as well. He, he can do physicals. Okay. Yeah, Mill missed time to one of the attacks, but uh, it won't be that big of a deal. We'll have to go Don't next attack, turn. Don't attack Oh, here comes a physical, thank goodness. Yeah. So he does attack you when he locks Y or A, but um, the attack there was pretty non-threatening. Yeah. He either does only physicals or, yeah, this attack, good night, which put a character to sleep, and Mala's fine, yeah. As long as it doesn't hit Gina, it's all you're He should have died there if I uh, yeah, yeah. had time to attack right, but that's fine. Yeah, it's still a good fight. Nice. Yeah, that's like one of... Uh, I find that design for that boss fight very interesting, and it's always cool to talk about it in speedrun. Here we'll be taking a HP up on Molo. That'll be to tank an attack from a boss uh, coming up uh, pretty soon here. That combined with the Fearless Pin will allow Molo <laughs> to survive with one hit point. Uh, so that's a pretty cool optimization. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save her right after that fight. That was a little... <laughs> I got the heart pounding. Yeah. He this... was pretty mean. So. <laughs> yeah. This is just like another big plot exposition where Jano is from the Star Road. He's explaining what these star pieces are, why there's a giant sword in Bowser's castle, and why it's our problem. Um, if there's any more donations, this might be a good time for one or two. We have $250 from Suki Baka. Uh -huh. As... As much as I love Nami, RPG Limit Break, and our runners, I just want to see Claude do something funny to distract Mill. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation point, donate, Mecco Strong. Mecco Strong. Thanks, Suki. And with that, we are less than $300 away from doing some silly stuff later in this run. Get those donations in if you want to see some incredibly silly things later on. <laughs> This guy heard everything. We're in trouble now. Spy. <clears throat> so now we have two of our seven star pieces. Things are looking up. All right, as Mill enters this mole village, he will be uh, buying a few items here. So he'll also be doing some selling to get some uh, spending cash here. Uh, majority of the selling will be done later on though. So he'll be buying uh, the strongest attack items for the characters, and also be buying the mighty work pants. Work pants are an armor that can be equipped to anyone, and it's one of the few armors that boosts uh, not only defense, but also attack and speed. And it's uh, the primary armor used for pretty much the entire run. Yeah, after that point, we pretty much just, oh, Miller, are you gonna save? Yeah, I'm after this okay. cutscene. Good idea. Um, that's like pretty much the last time you see us buy armor in this run. Uh, work pants are just so good for, like Claude mentioned, the attack boost that they give you. I think the only other piece of armor that actually boosts your attack output is a super suit, which we'll be seeing a lot later in the run. Mm -hmm. Very budget productive apparel. <laughs> That's true. Work pants are not really all that expensive. And Everything else that you get after this point increases your defense and magic defense by a little bit, but we're more concerned about our output. Yep, all about the DPS. Which makes sense in a game where you can you know, perfect block everything that isn't a spell. That's true. I 
fun fact about Moleville, when Paw Mole blows up the interior with the bomb that you get from Croco, he turns back and he can't leave because he's blocked by um, that blockage on the bottom floor. He can't jump up to the top floor there like Mario can. If you backtrack and find him, he'll, he'll just be like, what are you doing back here? Go find the kids. If you jump on his head, he gets mad at you. They, they put so much stuff like that in this game and it's very silly. So there's just this inexplicable trampoline in the mines that Mario decides to jump on for some reason. Um, I, I'm not really sure why this part of the game happens either, but <laughs> because uh, Mario decided to knock himself out cold like that, um, our friend Croco has shown back up out of nowhere. I don't know how he even got in here, but uh, he's stolen all of our coins. And as you've heard earlier, the coin routing for this game is very tight, so we definitely have to chase him down and get our coins back. If you see a springboard, you gotta jump on it. Those are the rules. <laughs> So at this point, Croco just runs around the six rooms, and you can catch him in any of the six rooms that do a loop around the center of Moleville. Now, Croco is a little bit more of a jerk in this fight, because in the first phase, he's more likely to throw a bomb on you than attack you, and you cannot block his bombs. In the second phase of the fight, he steals your items, which means you can't really heal anymore, but at that point of the fight, all of his attacks become blockable. Yeah, so you, if he does use a, his unblockable attack, the bomb, you want to hit either Molo or Gino. Gino can tank plenty of attacks, and Molo can tank exactly one attack, so... He also has a chance to evade, as you just saw there. There's a 5% miss chance on Croco, which uh, you can't do anything about. Uh, you could use Mario's jump attack more, but it doesn't really do as much damage as the punch, and... Uh, yeah, it's also a little bit slower, like attack animation-wise. That was pretty good, though. Is he supposed to do more jumps in uh, this fight for the new route? Um, a little bit, yeah, but he, he got the jump in on border, so he's fine as far as the jump attack power routing goes. Oh, okay. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, jump attacks um, ignore evasion. Um, magic evade in this game doesn't really do much. Very unlucky to get another 5% uh, miss there, but nothing you can do. Is it only 5%? Yeah. Oh, wow. Today I learned. Yeah, I think Krakow's uh, evasion, like in the as far as the actual game goes, is listed as twenty percent, but like uh, that just converts to a five percent miss chance somehow. Mm -hmm. Just to clear tonic for doing the science on the evasion uh, a few years back. There's also a chance uh, when the fight's over, they he drops the flower box. It's a very, very good drop. It's worth 500 coins and would allow us to buy more uh, items. Nope. I did not no get it, but box. yeah, it's uh, only a 25% chance to get it, so yeah. More likely to not get it than get it. Yeah, if you get the flower box, and you can buy two more ice bombs later, and ice bombs are one of the most useful items in the late game, and you can only buy them at one point in the game that becomes permanently inaccessible later. So if you get the flower box, it just makes some boss strats later much faster. You don't have to worry about freebies as much. All right, coming up will be another invincibility star. This one is pretty important because the movement of the enemies is slightly random. It wants to get nine enemies and exactly nine enemies. Otherwise, the experience rate will be a little bit uh, messed up. So hopefully you do get uh, decent luck here with the enemy movements. Nice, nice, that's Nice. Great. That's actually really hard to do. Let's hear some applause Ooh. for Mill. He makes everything look so easy. Yeah, that's a, that's a scary one. Yeah, does have to backtrack and get this uh, coin box here. It's a little bit slow, but this is just uh, the best uh, source of coins uh, right here to hopefully be able to buy more attack items later on. <clears throat> All right, now it's uh, Punchinello. Uh, this guy wants to be famous, but he doesn't do a very good job of it. <laughs> uh, this route, he's got, Mario's gonna be one level lower than normal, which will give him slightly less damage, but it shouldn't matter too much to, to how the fight goes, which is just uh, use physical attacks and nothing else, pretty much. Yeah, this fight is pretty straightforward. There's three phases where he summons diff bombs of different sizes, and the larger they are, the more damage they do when they explode, but all the explosions can be perfect blocked. 
And Punchinel also has a chance of using Sandstorm a little bit later on in the fight, but uh, we have two characters immune to fear, which is what Sandstorm causes. So even if he uses it, it's not a big deal. He can also only use it once. He doesn't have enough FP to catch it to cast it twice. So even if he does use it, not the end of the world. It's not like you're in risk of getting feared again after you, you do whatever you have to do. No. There it is. There we go. Kind of a low chance for a new Sandstorm, so it's a little bit unlucky. One piece of trivia we learned about Punchinello recently. Um, he is the only fight in the game where um, any additions you get to your jump counter don't count. They're not persisted to memory after the fight ends. Uh, that also means that if you do 100 super jumps on him and only him, you will not get the super suit. Um, the game does not persist any of your changes to its long-term memory that happened in battle during Punchinello, and that's because the fight ends in the middle of a battle cutscene, which is some very volatile code that when it just aborts the battle entirely, just nothing gets written to memory. Um, no other fights in the game do that. It's just Punchinello's trying so hard to be famous and ended up like actually not even being relevant to your game's memory. Yeah, it's a great way of putting it. Like, he's just, oh, Monsters FP is gone, you try to use Sandstorm again. Like this, uh, the boss gives you nothing. Gives you no experience, no coins, nothing saves. It's just he's just here. You beat him, and then you forget about him. All he wanted to do was be famous. The game game came and threw him a bone. Well, now he's in front of thousands of viewers, so I guess he's famous now. The next minute and a half. <laughs> All right, that's good. You can even um, jump up to where his star piece is in the room before you fight him, but the star piece can't be interacted with, but it would be really funny if you could just skip him for that reason as well. Um, if there's more donations, this is a good time for one or two. Well, you better start texting everybody you know because a $500 donation came in from Anonymous. Thank you. Thank you to all the runners, commentators, staff, and volunteers for all the hard work you are doing to raise money for a great cause. Can't wait to see what everyone does for distractions during the super jump. And with that donation, we have met it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you great. so much. I got to start thinking about what I'm going to do during the event of <laughs> Yeah, same. <laughs> Oh yeah, fun fact about star pieces, they also double up as showers. See what I mean? I'd say this run's going pretty well so far, Mel. Yeah, impressed. You're doing good. Not bad. Stop counting my items. I think I have like nine or 10. You'll be fine. We do have an incentive for a blindfolded menu later on, so I had to be counting up uh, all the items I got and whether or not I got freebies on them, so might have to stop and count later, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's all fine. good. All right, coming up is the minecart minigame. This is a good one. He's going to be proceeding along a track, collecting mushrooms and coins and trying to get a time under two minutes. Hopefully he has it in him. Mill actually did uh, uh, produce the tape that's used as the reference for the minecart minigame, so he should be fine. We're seeing a lot of sub twos in chat. All right. Who is going to throw down $5 if Mill manages to get sub two on this run? If he doesn't get sub two, what do you get out of it? You get an all expenses paid trip to Booster Tower. <laughs> That is like a long-standing tradition in known gamer I Eat Your Pies chat where people throw down a sub or five bucks when uh, he gets sub two in minecart. Sub two is like the standard time that you get like if you don't crash more than twice generally, but it's uh, this minigame is harder than it looks. Oh. Like there, you have to um, break significantly around sharp corners like that, and uh, then you have the side-scrolling rooms. Oh, oh that's... Stabilized? Nope, nope, didn't stabilize. It's okay, you got this. Getting those last ones there, if you miss that jump, you miss out on a ton of mushrooms, so getting that, awesome.
Can I get some honks, Mill? Thank you. As a Verney would say, shouts to Chen, who always goes fishing during this part of the run. <laughs> Chat is loving the honks, by the way. So sub two is still possible if Mill does this room perfectly. It's gonna be very tough, but uh, maybe. I think I need you can that still mushroom. Do it. Oh, it's gonna be so close. Is he gonna do it? Oh, oh yeah. let's go! Nice. Oh, let's go! <laughs> Never worried. Never worried. I was a little bit worried. <laughs> that's um that's pretty hard to do if you miss any mushrooms in the second screen and if you have like at least one crash, so still getting uh sub two times like that's that's great. Yeah, RPG Lone Break special. You just crash into these poor moles house. Another twenty years in a mine to repair that. <laughs> Also, if you've ever done the Moleville minecart minigame and you've got a time faster than three minutes and 30 seconds, you should feel good about that because that's faster than just putting your controller down and doing nothing. <laughs> now here comes my favorite part of the game. Booster Tower. Booster's Tower is a very fun platforming area in this platformer RPG. It also features the best character in the game, Booster. And uh, everything in there is just pretty fun. And you're going to see something pretty cool that we didn't do um, in the run I did for this six years ago. Uh, we're going to see another RNG manipulation that is has a lot more implications uh, on its shoulders than the Terrapin Manip did. Yeah. First we go into a booster pass though. First we get a very well hidden frog coin, this uh, artichoke. Then we'll be picking up a very, very important item, which is the rock candy, the strongest attack item. It does a 200 damage to all enemies. It'll be used uh, very shortly actually, and hopefully we'll be able to keep using it uh, throughout the run. So here's Bowser. He's lost his army. Things are not looking so good for him. F and chat for Bowser. This is probably like one of the best, if not the best renditions of Bowser. Just his writing is incredible. Oh yeah, I agree. Same with Peach too. She's great in this game. Mm -hmm. I do kind of hope they preserve most of the uh, translation for the remake. I agree completely. Um, the localization was a fairly significant departure from the original Japanese text, but I've heard from people fluent in both English and Japanese that the English they thought was actually better. So I hope that there, a lot of this still gets referenced in the remake script. So this is the first time in recorded history that Mario and Bowser have actually teamed up in a video game. Bowser's going to be joining our party, and he's really useful because he can tank a lot of hits. He's pretty strong. He's very good in the early game, and in the mid game, he's also like someone that you want to keep around to be tanky in certain boss fights. Yeah. Also, hope you didn't get attached to Mario because we're just done using him for the entire rest of the run. Because Bowser's just better in every single way. Yeah. If you want to use Mario more, then run most of the stuff. Fun fact, if you accidentally say yes to that Switch tutorial, um, it will do the item tutorial by accident because it is a set of pre-programmed inputs on your menu that tries to find the Switch menu, but if you did max skip, then the star piece menu option is not there, so it loops back around to the item option in your menu and just starts playing the item tutorial completely incorrectly. Yeah, once you use a mushroom that you don't have anymore? Yeah, it tries to use a mushroom, <laughs> so it just does a bunch of incorrect inputs and does nothing, and it just closes itself. All right, so there's a lot of hidden items here in uh, Booster's Tower, mostly uh, frog coins. That's a, a great way to, uh, yeah, stalk them with frog coins. You also passed a, a button there, allows you to go to uh, Booster Pass Secret, which used to be in the route long ago. Gives you uh, more coins and another frog coin, but it's uh, a little bit too slow, so we no longer go there. Yeah, I think that was still in the route when I ran this at Limit Break 17. Because that was like before we started doing our semen ips and stuff like that. This area can be kind of a scary too because there's a lot of inescapable encounters, mm -hmm. especially this room. 
All right, very nice. Nice. Yeah. There's now, a bunch of trap tiles there, and if he steps on the wrong one, he gets into an encounter, and then he can't escape, and it messes up the experience route because he has to win the fight. It's just a huge mess. So it was, uh, that was great. It also like terrifies you when you land on it. It just makes a loud explosion. Yeah, sound. yeah. Um, now, the way that that room is set up is that if you collect a coin, the four tiles touching that coin are all safe. Every um, explosion that starts a new encounter is the size of four tiles, so you can kind of like just remember where they are and follow the coins, and you'll be safe. Yeah. You also get the key and go through a door there, get the zoom shoes, which used to be in a very old route, but that's uh, no longer needed. Hmm. All right. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah, this part of the game, Peach is being held captive because after the explosion of Bowser's Keep, she landed on Booster's balcony, and Booster took that as a sign that he needs to marry her. But the whole reason Booster wants to marry her is just because he he thinks that in, in order to get a cake, you have to marry someone so you can eat the wedding cake. So he just wants to marry Peach so that he can eat a cake. Um, this whole part of the game is extremely silly, and uh, but after um, this whole scene in here, we're going to see one of the more... Uh, really cool additions to the any percent route since the last time it was at limit break yeah i'll probably explain that in a few minutes yeah first we have to do the curtain mini game where you just have to uh, hide from booster in the snippets not sure if mill's gonna try and poke his nose out for a little bit of swag but <laughs> i highly encourage that Yeah, Mill's not normally known for doing stuff like that. You know, this is a marathon run. Got to entertain the people. He's just doing Turbo B to make the annoying jump sound. Through this. I suggested this to him yesterday. I think he was actually going to do it. <laughs> yeah, the way that this mini game works is that um, the Snivets are looking behind the curtains and you don't want to get seen by them. But um, it only detects if you are on any set of two tiles side by side. So Mario's feet are technically within that yellow tile that is not behind the curtain that he just opened, so he doesn't get caught. You can just stick your nose out from behind the curtains and they're none the wiser. Boing, boing, boing. Boing, boing, boing. When Mill's doing super jumps on Mokura, I'll just boot up another copy of SMR <laughs> beside him and do this. <laughs> All right, a little bit of notes. Masterfully done. All right, so I guess we'll start talking about another knife guy, great guy, Manip. So <laughs> this is going to be probably the hardest part of the run. Uh, he's going to try and uh, manipulate the fight such that he freebies the rock candy uh, two to three times. Uh, it's very precise. Uh, it's going to be reliant on audio cues. It's going to be a 10 frame window, then two six frame windows, and then an eight frame window. And uh, ideally, he keeps the rock candy for the entire fight. And uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully that goes well. Uh, this route is depend. Oh, by the way, here's the password. Beanie. <laughs> uh, hopefully it goes well. Uh, looks like he's not going to get it. He's probably just going to abandon because the rock candy is a very important item we need for a later boss. Uh, yeah, we believe in Mill. We believe in Mill. Um, what's cool about oh. RNG in this game is that the counter for RNG only runs when you're actually inside levels. It doesn't run on um, your file select menu or before getting into your file select menu or anything like that. So the RNG just resets um, when you reset your game. There are two RNG seeds in battle, and switching between them can be caused by the most innocuous things. There's only one RNG seed in the overworld. Um, but yeah, we're gonna... The one that you get depends on how high the save box is in its elevation when you jump on it. That's correct. Yeah, the it's a, it's really cool. There's a lot of just awesome details that went into this. And shout out for, shout out to Swinch for all the work that he did for these manips. Yeah, we're gonna ask everyone to be uh, very quiet until the fight's over, pretty much. And again, he might have to retempt it. I'm only gonna try this once. Okay. I 
it's fine. Okay. Oh, well. So yeah, I got the freebie, but we have to abandon it now. Yeah, he's gonna abandon the the fight and just uh, do it normally now. Ideally, again, you keep a uh, freebie in the rock candy. We got the uh, the first one, which is uh, very important, and also the uh, the boss's fear, so he's gonna be taking uh, additional damage. Yeah, now he's just gonna fight it out. But still pretty good, yeah. Got one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that fear status is why the rock candy um, is doing 300 damage instead of the normal 200. Uh, things like attack boost on your characters or fear on enemies, which by the way do not stack with each other, uh, also affect your item damage. That was a perfect fire orb. Yeah, it's Mario's level four though. That's like actually pretty hard to I do. I haven't done fire, fire orb. orb in years. Exactly, it's not normally used in the run anymore, so glad you still have that. Yeah, Fire Orb is an attack that it looks like a mashing attack, but it actually does have, I think, an 8-frame cooldown after every button that you press, so doing it optimally to get the max amount of Fire Orbs in the window that you have to perform them is not actually that easy. Yeah. That was still a pretty good fight. Okay. Uh, Knife Guy and Greg could have a chance to put you to sleep, and then just uh, use the mute, which doesn't even matter. So yeah, overall, it's still pretty good. Has yeah. the rock candy, we're in there. You got to show off the manipulation for the first rock candy freebie, and that's like that is a gigantic change from um, the route that you saw at Limit Break 2017. All right, coming up next will be a mini game where you try and uh, rescue Princess Peach and collect the uh, flowers along the way. Uh, you have to be dodging barrels, which are a little bit random as well. Uh, you want to get ideally 14. I think that's uh, really hard. Anything like 11 plus is fine. Even if you get like eight, it's it's kind of whatever. It's only loses like a few seconds uh, for flower you miss. The max you can get is 16. Have all three of us gotten 16 before? I have once. I'm really bad at this mini game. Oh, I can't I've do it. I've done it once in my life. <laughs> I'm really bad at all the mini games. I just, you know, wrap the game, just do the fights, and skip turbo past everything else on emulator. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> this is exactly how it always goes for me. Like, I miss one, I can never recover, and I just keep missing it. This is a deceptively hard minigame. Yeah, again, it's a little bit random with how the barrels spawn, so it's not the same every time. Oh. Also, the uh, hitbox and the sniffets is kind of unforgiving, and sometimes it looks like you can jump on them, and you don't actually jump on them. Oh. <laughs> this is kind of really bad, though. You need to start getting flowers soon. Oh. Okay, I'll start pulling out my list of uh, backup flowers. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need it. You know what I'll do? I'll open up the randomizer code and search for the word flower in the applications. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're up to three, right? That's, that's four. Okay, four? All right. Yeah. Even better. What, what is the minimum that you can get and still be safe? Um, about to find out. Yeah, we're about to find out this <laughs> run. Is it 11 or 8? I forget. There's been so many routes changes since I started running this game. Um, we'll just hope he's fine with eight. I think my PB gets nine. I think I was fine. So. Okay. That's promising. Yeah, he should be fine maybe with a couple of backups now. I don't think I was going to get that one anyway. Oh, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. oh that was sick. <laughs> the seven? We'll see. That's a... Seven. Seven, okay. All right, well, this will be uh, interesting. We're going to need every backup flower in the book, pretty much. You can get two in Mushroom Kingdom basement where you're going after this anyway. I'll, I would recommend those, yeah. Yeah. What other ones are there? Um, there's the one, one in the corner? Oh. Yeah, the one in the corner is kind of annoying. A booster pass? Uh, Mushroom Kingdom, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, well, you just do a stair jump. And then there's, like, two you can get booster pass without the secret as well. That would bring you up to 11 at least. You got time for some donations to make you feel better? Yeah, this is probably a good time for a feel. A uh, lot of love for your sub to Minecart. Prof Ness with $5. Fine, $5 for the sub to Minecart. But while <laughs> I'm here, set the record straight. What is the button timing on items to trigger a freebie? 90s me needs to know. $10 from Do I CM. You did it, Mill. $5 from Riza Kuhn. I'm a man of my word. $5 for a sub to my cart. Also, Booster is best husbando. Sure, Agree. 
$10 from Nocturne, nice up to my cart, oh. Hawk Hawk. $5 from Nemi 10X for cutting the two, and Chief Beef 100 with $5. Sub to Harp. Hey, Pidge. Thanks for the SMRPG cart forever ago. Money goes to runner's choice. Well, I just ran into the most dangerous fight in the uh, game without saving. So, yeah. hey, we might get to do uh, Booster's Hill again. <laughs> we'll be fine. You'll be fine. That's, that's the backup strat. Yeah. A lot of flowers isn't going to matter for this fight. It's only going to matter for a few bosses later on. So we'll be able to fix it by then. But uh, this boss is going to be dangerous for other reasons. Backup flowers. Uh, but anyways, we're going to be doing a mini game here soon where we have to collect uh, Peach's items. Uh, and the Sniffets have them. The way the Sniffets move is also random. So he's going to have to <laughs> react properly and just uh, catch them as quickly as possible. Oh, wow. Yeah, sometimes they can be a bit rude, jump over stuff. Yeah, sometimes there's a small delay, too, before the text actually initializes. That's I can, pretty I can, good, though. I can think of four really easy backup flowers if you need them later. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I can go to Booster Hill. Probably. Well, I, don't, I can't go to the pass. No. I, I wouldn't go to Booster Hill. You can do Booster Pass without the, the secret passageway. There's still two more flowers in there. Yeah. And depending on how fast you collect the items, you get a different cutscene here. Should be getting the kiss from Peach, because uh, we were fast enough. Also get a kiss from uh, Bowser and uh, Booster and some other stuff, but uh, yeah, shouldn't yeah. normally be seeing that. You can get Bowser and Booster at the same time if you're really bad at collecting items, but if you ask me, that's the best ending. <laughs> yeah, Oxus would certainly agree with that. I made a cross-stitch of that as a GDQ prize for Justin's run in 2019. <laughs> that was my first time ever cross-stitching anything, and I don't regret it. So we're coming up on the cake fight, which is one of the most threatening fights in the speedrun. Oh, um, happy birthday, Pidge. Oh, thank you so I, much. I hope your cake is very <laughs> nice to me. I, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So yeah, the fight's going to be in three phases. The first and third ones aren't too bad. It's going to be the second phase we're worried about. So the first phase, we just have to worry about blocking the chef attacks, which are a little bit annoying. The block time is a little bit unintuitive. Well, there's no problems here, though. It's going to be using uh, physical attacks here, and then Mara's also going to be using a uh, red essence on the second turn or to render himself invincible. Which he'll need for phase two, which is just an onslaught of magic from both halves of the cake. Mm -hmm. And magic, like we said earlier, cannot be time blocked, so you just kind of have to tank it. Mario's very weak, he can't do that, which is why we give him the right essence in this fight. Yeah, the other two can tank a few attacks, especially because they both have the Fearless pins, because Spunt's also going to be able to use Sandstorm, much like you saw from Punchinello earlier. And by having the Fearless pin, we're going to be immune to that at least. But he can do a whole bunch of other stuff. He can put you to sleep, he can use a powerful a single target attacks. And you just kind of have to tank it while uh, taking out the uh, candles, as we'll see here soon. SMRPG trivia about Red Essence. If you cast Group Hug, it nullifies your Red Essence and you're not invincible anymore. That spell is literally broken. <clears throat> Alright, so we got through the first phase. Alright, all you have to do is just uh, perfect time all the attacks and you're good to go here. So now he's going to have uh, two attacks to blow out the candles. And the way this works is you just have to do any physical attack, timed, untimed, damage doesn't matter at all, in order to uh, just try and blow them all out while taking everything Bunch tries to throw at you. You can do physicals, uh, orb attacks, which are also physicals, and yeah, a ton of other stuff. So hopefully get lucky, because yeah, Mill didn't save, so we need some good luck here. I need everyone in chat to give us a spirit bomb for Mill right now. <laughs> did you know that if you get a miss on one of those candles, it still blows it out? I did. I did. I remember seeing Char did that or something, right? The, the Gen 1 miss in SMRPG. Yep. There's a 1 256 chance to miss every enemy in this game. Just a little fun thing they added, of course. Okay, partial block on yeah. that, still good. That's good. We're past we're, candle, we're right? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Those are very hard to react to. <laughs> this is a pretty good phase two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three physicals. All right, I guess my birthday cake was a bit nicer to you. Very kind. <laughs> 
So yeah, the uh, jump power attack routing kind of ends here. As long as Mario does uh, 150 damage with jump, yeah, we're fine here, yeah. Fun to, uh, this, ra this phase right here, Raspberry phase, has 600 hit points. So you want to be able to do uh, 150 with both uh, Bowser and Mario. Mario wasn't supposed to die there, but it's not a big deal. Yeah, with Gino like getting some extra, some more attacks, and that just makes up for Mario. Yeah, it's uh, not too likely that Gino actually does survive to phase three, but since he was alive and in perfect health, uh, no problems there. That's a near perfect fight. Yeah, you can't you cannot complain about that. And yeah, you probably saw the candles refresh too. So you know, if you start losing characters, the candles start rebuilding, and it just becomes an unwinnable situation, which is why you know we're a little bit scared he didn't save. Mm -hmm. And now Booster gets what he wants, he gets his cake, so he can leave and go back home to his tower with Peach still here, wondering what the heck just happened. Um, if there's any more donations, I think we have time for another one or two. JB Run TR donates $300. Wow. Love the game and the fundraising initiative. Thanks for all you do, RPGLB. And we have Doe Wolf coming in with $158. SMRPG is too many syllables. No room for haikus. <laughs> we see a haiku later on in the run. <laughs> it's true. Special message to chat, if you want to get a donation read, this is a good time to send one in because we are about to enter one of the longest cutscenes in the game. Sure are. And now uh, we have our last party member, sort of. That sort of. That cutscene is a build up into the scariest part of the game. I'm gonna take a look in here. Uh, one, three, three, seven. If you try to leave out of the north exit of the Marymore Courtyard here instead of the south exit after recruiting Peach, everyone in your party starts getting really mad at you. Um, just saying, dude, we need to take Peach back to Mushroom Kingdom. What are you doing? And Mario just goes, no. And Bowser comes out and says, listen, nobody is authorized to kidnap the princess except me. It just wouldn't be right. That That's like probably my favorite cutscene, and there's only one part in the game where you can see it. Oh, yeah, Mill, if you want backup flowers. Yeah, we're, I'm going to try. Nice. You gonna go for a stair jump? Toad still walks around, doesn't he? Well, give him a chance. <laughs> oh no, he's not. Only after you open that one. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. This is a tough tech. Oh, wow, nice. Oh, oh, come back. <laughs> okay. All right, we should yeah. be fine now, <laughs> flowers, pretty much, so. The that jump to reveal the treasure chest is pixel perfect, and if you can do it consistently, it's faster than riding the toad around, but that it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the stuff runners hate this one weird trick. So here, of course, you can't jump on Toad's head to get that treasure chest if you missed it, because he's gone by the time. Is Flower in here still? Um, oh, nope. No, you can't get that one anymore. I think you're fine on Flowers Mill, no yeah. worries. Yeah, if you want to be really safe, just go pick up the other two in Booster Pass. Yep, the three minute cutscene probably. Yeah, a lot of mashing. Yeah, this is one of the best times in the run for donations. So if you got them, let's hear them. All righty, here we go. Boss Crab donates $5 and said, that was one for the scrapbook. Good luck on the cake, Mill. I love you. Anonymous donates $100 and just says, video games. Agree. And with all of those donations, there is stuff you can win until uh, the end of our next run of Pokemon Alpha, Sapphire, and Omega Ruby. You can win a Bowser Iron-On Patch for $5 donation, Final Fantasy IX Steam Key, $5 donation, Final Fantasy Sticker Sheets, $5 donation, Pokemon Paldea Evolved Elite Trainer Box number two, a $10 minimum donation, 
Team Magma, Team Aqua Patches, five bucks. A World of Final Fantasy Steam Key. And lastly, Zidane and Garnet Pearlers. And the things that you can donate to coming up, speaking of Pokemon Alpha, Sapphire, and Omega Ruby, you can name uh, Garudon and Kyogre. Currently in the lead is Paraball. And you have to say it like that every time you say it. Uh, you can name Latios and Latias. Uh, currently in the lead is Wednesday with the hundred bucks, and you can also name Mudkip. And currently in the lead with twenty-five dollars is Budkip. I love the Chancellor's mustache. It's it's a pretty hardcore it's... mustache. In very early previews of the game, his name was Mushroom Retainer. Retainer. We have $100 from Aryan. There's a distinct lack of Yoshi, Yoshi racing in this speed run. <laughs> there sure is. Yeah. Got to watch low level for that. Got to watch low level for that. <laughs> I don't think I could beat Bashi right now at all. I'll do it. Ever. Yeah, Pitch can do it. Just give me the controller. I'll do it. And during this cutscene, we want to send out thanks to the people involved in our Forage language restreams. Our French restream can be found at twitch.tv slash le French restream. And our Japanese stream can be found at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them some love. RPG Limit Break is also grateful to LLK, a longtime contributor to GDQ Marathons and the designer of our promo banners, attendee badges, and emotes. Check out her work at jazaboo.com. That's J-A-Z-A-A-B-O-O.com. Another artist that deserves special thanks is the one that worked on our overlays, Oro. You can find Oro over on Twitter at Oro Len. And if you haven't checked out his VOD of the Eternal Sonata run, it was really good. We got a whole bunch of Chopin facts during his run. So here we tie up um, an unclosed plot point from the start of the game, uh, where Mallow left home, Frog Fuchsius was sad. He would have been cheered up by the cricket pie that we forgot to get for Mallow, which was the whole reason he came to Mushroom Kingdom to begin with. Um, and now with that, we talked to Frog Fuchsius again, and he unlocked Star Hill for us. And it also gives it the Froggy Stick, which was used in some very old iterations of the rap, and now it's just uh, sold for coins. Also, we did just recruit Peach as our final um, playable character in the game. Peach is really interesting in the speed run because in the way that the game is designed, she learns mostly support magic for most of the game, but she actually has pretty good stats. And you'll be seeing pretty soon after Star Hill that we abuse a glitch to teach her some offensive magic, and she does become like one of our primary mages, um, offense mages in the speed run. Yeah. Here in Star Hill, though, this is kind of just a movement-based uh, dungeon, if you want to call it that. Just gotta talk to the uh, big stars in order to, up the, or to open up the path for the larger stars. And by the end, we'll get another star piece. Some fun trivia about this place is that um, there's a wish that most people know if they've played this game is from Luigi. Um, that might actually just be some Ted Wolsey decoration for the text because the original uh, text in Japanese doesn't give any indication that it's from Luigi. It just says, I want to help my brother. And there are several characters that could be about, but in the English version, it's Luigi. There is an optimal way to call it, to um, do the star flowers, which is what Mill is doing. There's a lot of hidden invisible walls in Star Hill that uh, block your way when you're trying to get from one star flower to the next. I actually made an app one time where you just tap them in the right order to remember what to do in the in Star Hill. All right, should we start, start talking about Seaside? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, coming up will be a, the hardest menu game, the longest menu in the game. Mill will be doing it blindfolded. Uh, thanks to uh, your donations, yeah, it was incentive. So what he's going to be doing is he's going to be selling pretty much everything we've acquired so far, all spare items, all uh, useless uh, armor and weapons and all that. He's going to be buying a bunch of attack items, specifically fire bombs, ice bombs, fright bombs, and possibly a bad mushroom if he has the coins for it. Not sure if he does. And um, 
yeah, it's just gonna be uh, done without sight and hopefully it uh, goes well. Be saving me forward, of course, just in case uh, something bad happens. This is really exciting because blindfold seaside menu I don't think has ever been done in a marathon run before. Yeah, first I'm gonna talk to the elder to get a, uh, a story uh, event uh, here. Now Mill's gonna be buying a lot of ice bombs because they do massive AOE damage and um, the elemental in the elements infused in them um, are exploiting a lot of weaknesses for late game bosses. Yeah, he's also buying the experience booster here, which is what our, all our frog coins are for. The experience booster doubles the amount of uh, experience that the uh, character it's equipped to earns, even if they're not in the party. That's going to be mostly used on Mario to uh, catch his level up to a uh, uh, higher amount, so he does uh, a lot of damage, because he'll be the primary right. damage dealer. You want me to hold your headset? Yeah, we're going to take that off. Here we go. Headset back? Uh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, you're gonna need sound. Yeah. yeah. Here. <laughs> oh, I put it on backwards. <laughs> Is that good? Yep. All right, good luck. a lot of 69 coin Muku cookies. <laughs> Where do they go wrong? We'll find out later. If you ask me, that's the correct choice. I'll give it one more shot. I keep doing it, Mel. You got this. You can do it. The people donated for it. Funny. Oh, I'll see that little diagonal. You're fine. Yeah. The bad mushroom. Yes. Yes. Uh... Not quite. Not quite. All right. That well, was close. There's one able juice you didn't sell. Oh, uh, I got an extra able juice. Oh <laughs> uh, well. That's all right, you Math got this. Math is hard. You got this. Five, seven total items? I'd count the small items again just to make sure. We tried. Uh -huh. The way that freebie luck is in this game, this is actually really hard. Oh, uh, yep. My counting was wrong earlier. FF9 runners, please don't make fun of us yeah, right please. now. You've done it. Yeah, I see. <laughs> All right. Here, let me help you. Oh, you got it? Okay. All right. All right. Back into a very scary part of the Yeah. Game. Maybe <laughs> save before the sea star, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, there's a couple variables in that, but it's not too bad. But That was the first time anyone did that yeah. in a marathon, yeah, was so still very impressive. that was pretty sick. <laughs> All right, uh, move swap glitch. So what Milt's gonna be doing here is he's going to jump, he's gonna pause, he's gonna switch uh, Mal and Peach here, and hopefully get all these star slaps. If not, he's gonna have to uh, reset and try again, because uh, this star is very important. 
All right, very nice. nice. So what that did here is it's going to swap the uh, stat level ups and abilities that the characters learn. And what that's going to cause is that Peach is going to learn Shocker at level 10. It's also going to cause Malo to basically lose all his stats because he's going to be gaining Peach's level. This character right here is actually Malo. And uh, it's pretty interesting because Peach doesn't have any level ups coded for the levels before she uh, joins the party, as you might imagine, because why would they? So Malo just loses like two levels worth of uh, stats right there. And uh, he's just even more useless than uh, before. Just, yeah. No, the way that that, um, uh, that exploit works is very fascinating because um, typically when you open a treasure chest to get an EXP star, your menu button is disabled. But if you press the X button while you're mid-jump, the time that it takes for uh, the menu, uh, for your X press to fade out into the menu is longer than it takes for the chest to actually open and give you the EXP star status, which is what allows you to actually perform a switch when you're not normally allowed, uh, supposed to be allowed to do that. We don't need to uh, do any of the mini games in the sunken uh, ship because we already know the password, which is Pearls. We'll be going into King Calamari. So, King Cal Calamari is going to be primarily fought by using Fire Bonds, which is fought during the uh, Blindfold Seaside menu. Now, we're going to be boosting Bowser here because, again, that increases your damage with attack items, causing him to do uh, 360 damage with the Fire Bomb. Firebomb normally does 120, so that's a combination of Geno Boost increasing your attack damage output and also the tentacles being weak to fire. Yep. You're going to be seeing a lot of that this run with um, Ice Bombs as well. There's a lot of endgame bosses that are weak to ice. Yeah, the reason why that tentacle didn't die is because it's actually a different enemy than the, uh, the other ones. Yeah, it's got a different HP stat. And uh, new to this route, uh, in the older routes, you would just do a jump on King Calamari with Mario to kind of finish him off after using two fire bombs. Or here we're going to be doing five super jumps just because it's the fastest method of uh, dealing damage here. Nice freebie, too. Yeah, freebies from this point onwards are extremely important. Super jumping just for five looks a little bit silly, but there's uh, no faster way to take out King Calamari in this route. You're seeing a lot more of those uh, later on, though, for sure. Yeah, like Claude was saying, uh, the bombs that you get freebies of are extremely important because there's a lot of later game strats where there are multiple different strategies you can do to the boss depending on how many freebies you got. Like Zar Dragon, weak to ice, you do a bunch of ice bombs. That's 420 damage every time. Um, and you actually cannot go back to the shop where you bought the bombs. It disappears permanently after you beat Rudovich. So you want to hold on to as many freebies as you can. It makes everything faster. There we got another Caro Caro Cola, but this time we're actually going to be using it as an item rather than selling it for coins. Pretty much at this point forward, any item we get is just going to be actually uh, used because coins aren't that important anymore in the run. Now we've uh, got all our attack items uh, bought. Ooh, the linebacker. This fish is the bane of every <laughs> SMRPG runner's existence. <laughs> it's so unpredictable, and it's faster than you are. All right, Mills picked up the safety ring, one of the uh, best accessories. It's going to render him immune to all status effects, immune to all elemental damage, and also increases speed by a little bit. Also makes him immune to one-hit KO attacks, but that's not super important until, like, the end of the game. A lot of the accessories in this game uh, don't actually tell you what they do very well. So when we got the amulet earlier, like, yeah, it manipulates your speed a bit, it makes, your, uh, it makes your magic stronger, but it also actually makes an elementals do half damage to you, which is something that's kind of cool. This menu beforehand was put the experience booster on Mario again to uh, level him up a little bit. And also to make sure Peach goes first in this fight, Peach has uh, one of the faster item use animations in this game uh, compared to Geo's, which is the slowest. So just a little small optimization here to make sure she's the one that uses the item. In our previous routes, you could actually use Molo here, uh, boost him, and then use Thunderbolt to take out the bandana routes. But again, because Molo lost two levels worth of stats via the move swap glitch, you can no longer do that uh, strategy. So we're about to meet Johnny. He's kind of a wrong place at the wrong time kind of guy. The star piece fell into his ship, and uh, he's very protective about it now. And uh, if we want to take it from him, then we got to fight him. 
Kamikara hitting level 9 there is extremely important. He has just enough experience to actually uh, make it there, which means uh, Mill hasn't messed up anything about the experience route so far, which is great. I'm uh, also going to request a silence from the room at this point because this is where Mill's going to be doing 100 super jumps for the first time. Yeah, strategy for this fight is going to be boost Mario so he does more damage and just 100 super jumps, and that's all there is to it. He also has to ban uh, block the bandana blue attacks, though, but uh, it's not too big of a deal. Super jumps, you have to chain uh, 100 uh, timed hits in a row, and uh, after the 13th, it becomes a three frame window, 120 of the second. Mill has to do that consecutively, not dropping even one. Here we go. There it is. Wow. I miscounted. I thought that was like 93. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. First try super jumps in a marathon run. That deserves a second round of applause, I think. Well done. Well done. You can no. lose sleep over that. <laughs> No, that's really important um, because if you do 100 super jumps, then you get the best item in the game later on when you visit Monster Town. There's a dog there who gives you a prize if you've done a lot of super jumps. After 30, he gives you the attack scarf. After 100, he gives you the super suit. Super suit gives you plus 50 to all stats, which is absolutely ridiculous. It is bar none the best equip in the game. And it is going to make the rest of the game so that you can do everything at a very low level. Um, we do 100, you can do 100 super jumps anytime, but we do it specifically on Johnny there because we do just barely over how much health he has. So if we were to do it on any other enemy after that would be kind of a waste of time. For Johnny, you're wasting the least time doing extra damage on him. Very well said. Small menu here to put the amulet on Peach because she's going to be the primary damage dealer during this next fight. And the amulet increases your uh, damage a little bit. Here. Yeah. You want to give away your uh, star piece right away instead of fighting him because number one, it's faster. Number two, you get a better reward from the real elder if you don't um, make Yuridovich do mean things to him. <clears throat> now this is where we get to see um, the, the effect of the swap glitch that we did earlier. Yuridovich is weak to electricity, and we taught Peach Shocker. Because we recruit Peach at level 9, she has a high, she has a very high magic attack stat, significantly higher than Mallow, who... Mallow actually does have the overall best magic stat, but Peach's right now is much better. So teaching her offensive magic, lightning magic, is going to allow her to do some pretty massive damage against Yuridovich in this fight with that swap spell. Defense-wise, too, this is uh, also pretty important. It's right out exactly so that the fight is 100% safe as long as it's uh, executed correctly. Peach has been taking a few uh, HP upgrades throughout the run, same with Gino, specifically to tank the first attacking Rudovic, which is always Water Blast. Water Blast is a very... Very powerful AoE spell. Yeah, uh, speaking of Shocker, it is a six frame window to perfect time Shocker. Mill missed that one, but it's uh, not a large deal as long as he gets uh, most of the other timings down. Yeah, Shocker's a bit hard to time because the audio cue for it is not very distinct. Yeah, 
Two thirds seven is what you want to see. Right, Flamestone's actually good. Yeah, it's uh, zero damage. Perfect. It's yeah, the best thing you can do as well. That safety ring uh, makes fire Flamestone do zero damage. I'm using a carry here to both uh, restore our HP and also our FP in order to give Peach enough shockers to finish the fight. Good freebie, by the way. Ooh. You don't actually want to use that ice bomb, but I didn't think in a firebomb freebie, so. Yeah, ideally, uh, fire bombs are way less useful than ice bombs moving forward here, so you want to use fire whenever possible. But the ice bomb fixed the uh, shocker mistake as well, so fine. As long as I don't miss one more. This part of the fight is kind of funny because um, Yurdovich splits into two, but you automatically target the right one with your cursor. Yep. Nicely done. Yeah, right. great. That's um, that boss is like, that's kind of uh, one of the only real difficulty spikes in the vanilla game. That's like typically where people notice uh, the difficulty gets a bit higher with your Yeah, very uh, hard fight to route to, mostly because of your uh, very high defense and magic defense stat, which is why having Shocker is great. Because again, like you said, he's uh, weak to thunder. All the real townspeople are rescued, and we get a flower box because we didn't play hardball with Yorinovich. Does that guy say you must be blind <laughs> on the shop owners? I'm right, going to be talking to the Elder again to advance the story a little bit, and then be doing a bit more shopping. We'll be buying the... Uh, the Hurley Glove for Bowser, the Double Punch for Gino, and the Trooper Shell for Mario. Uh, Trooper Shell will be used exactly once, and the uh, other weapons are going to be used uh, pretty much until the end of the game for both characters. And so their their final attack uh, weapons. And you want to have a good amount of coins right now because um, one of the EXP stars that we're about to get, you actually have to buy for 400 coins. Yeah, it's a very easy mistake actually to forget that cell menu and just not have enough coins for the uh, second invincibility star. Here we'll be, we'll be picking up a safety item, which is the second red essence. Uh, not normally gotten in RTA runs, but the, you know having more invincibility, always very useful in a few situations, especially in a marathon. A little bit slow here in the Gecko room. You can do that room like a little bit faster, but it's uh, kind of oh, hard. Oh, that's, that's, uh... <laughs> just save it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You save, reset the room, just yeah. try it all yeah, again. Yeah, reload the room after that. Those bees are. Yeah, these the enemies are very powerful. Shows, I... shows to the Salt Lake bees. Uh, <laughs> flowers are a little tricky. Yeah, you have time. to you have to land on a very precise point of the flower to be initially facing the direction that you want to go. Yeah, in previous iterations of the route, you would actually have no uh, armor on right now because you'd be doing uh, some, what was called death abuse in order to gain more experience from the invincibility stars. But uh, in this route, you're only going to be uh, doing the invincibility stars once. So you do have some armor on, so it's not as uh, scary. Yeah, you still... Um, that one of, that's something kind of fun about this game is that if you game over, you don't let like, you reset your progress to the last point that you saved, but you do not reset any level ups that you have gotten since then. So uh, one thing that we used to do was just do EXP stars, get a bunch of levels, get into an encounter on purpose, game over, and just do that ad nauseum until we get a lot more levels. Um, versions of any percent that don't do super jumps, which are a lot slower, will still do death abuse, but it's completely gone from the primary super jump route. And here is Mill is fighting the Shoguns. Uh, it's just using Ice Bombs, it's just the fastest method of taking them out. Uh, again, you want to be seeing freebies here. Ice Bombs are extremely important throughout the rest of the run. The more Ice Bombs you get, just the faster you go. There really is no limit, really. Like, you get probably like seven, eight, nine Ice Bomb freebies, and you can still find uses for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no such thing as too many ice bombs in any percent, at least. Fortunately, he really isn't getting uh, too many so far. Sure. 
there's such thing as too few, though. That That's is true. true. That is true. Oh, hey, look, look who showed up. All right. The last one. Oh, Ooh. wow. It's going to be a slow Mega Smilex. Yeah, it's uh, true. A lot of the bosses uh, moving forward here are going to be quite slower due to the lack of ice spawns, but nothing you can do. It's just a 25% chance for freebie. All right, very nice. Nice. That star can be a little bit tricky as well. That star is uh, also a little bit different in this route. It used to be able to kill, uh, uh, take out two geckos there on the bottom floor. Uh, which star you use to take out the enemies matters. The first one gives you 11 experience, and the second star, which is about to get, gives you 6 experience. So even though it looks like you're just going to take out the same amount of enemies with the invincibility stars, it uh, definitely matters uh, how many you take out with the first one, or the second one. Yeah, you might have noticed that when Mill was running around hitting the geckos and the dogs, there were certain points where he would pause and stop moving. That's not um, something that he's doing on purpose. It's that if you get two level ups too close together, the word level up that flies up above Mario in the overworld, if two members of your party are getting level ups too close together, then the animation of the level up has to finish before the next one can start and Mario is stuck. And that wastes your star uh, EXP star counter. Yeah, and in this route in particular, there's one more pause uh, than compared to what you used to get, which is why you can, uh, can't take as many geckos this time around um, with the first star. I got the mushroom, that's nice. Chance to get a Yoshi cookie there, which uh, clutters up your inventory a little bit, so. Here it's about a 50-50 chance to be able to proceed with the game. Uh, he wants to see the uh, correct fortune in order to go fight the uh, next boss. A little bit unlucky here. There's an upper limit on how unlucky you can get before it just forces you to fight below. It's not three, it's like 15, but third try is the charm. Who cares? All right, Balone's back. Uh, strategy for this fight is going to use a Fright Bomb because Balone's vulnerable to fear, so you can increase the damage you do. You're doing a physical attack with Geno. Uh, just uh, damage him a little bit, and then be doing uh, more super jumps, about uh, 60 or so. Hopefully that goes well. Looks good to me. Nice. So, dropping, um, doing super jumps after Johnny is a little bit less stressful because you no longer have um, the high stakes of I need to do 100 consecutive to get the super suit. If you drop jumps on any other enemy, you can just do it again your next turn. Dropping it on Balom is kind of bad though because then he starts summoning clones that mess up your EXP. So, Mill doing perfect super jumps there. Very good for his EXP route. Mill used to have world record in this category. The man is an experienced super jumper, but you know, it's a three frame window. Things happen. Yeah. I'd say Mill's always been a really good super jumps, as long as I've known him. There's the attack scarf. And it is the my super suit. There we go. That gives 50, uh, plus 50 to all stats, um, plus 30 to speed, and it also nullifies all elemental damage and all status effects. It's like the lazy shell, but better. Me chest. Oh. 23 left. 23 left. Wow. Well, you better get on that, buddy. I guess we got one more hidden chest this run, right? Because of the flower. Yeah. So yeah, long uh, cutscene sequence is coming up here, so it might be a good time for donations. Yeah, sure. We've got $50 from Daniel RGT. Have a happy water blast from me. Have a happy RPG limit break from the rest of the Earthbound community. 
Shout out to Daniel RGT. He couched um, a couple of my SMRPG runs at Limit Break in the past. $10 from Rogue Rob. Super Mario RPG on World Jump Day, no less. Perfection. Also Beanie. Uh, and I looked up World Jump Day is really a thing. Uh, $25 from uh, Bishfuang Balls. <laughs> Just out here trying to give my energy to my boy Mill, my speed hero Pidge, and my son, the Claude. Wait. <laughs> Wish I were there right now. <laughs> I don't think a Claude got a say in that. I don't, I don't think that's right, but uh, how's the pick? When Vic gets here, I'm rolling out the red carpet. Even if it's mid run, I'm just getting up from commentary and going back over there. He's on a plane right now. Or... <laughs> I hope he's on a plane. What? What? He's I missed here. my chance for all the red carpet for my speed hero. This is the worst day ever. <laughs> and we have $10 from Bryce. I'd like to dedicate this donation to my four children, Adelaide, Brigham, Felicity, and Evangeline. Love you all. This is a fun little mini game where uh, you just have to climb the Troopa shells along this giant wall. If you get it in under 12 seconds, then you get the Troopa pin, which is another very important accessory. It is a, a good speed booster, and it also gives you an automatic attack boost. Traditional world, uh, world jump day uh, port. Ten thirty-eight. Very nice. Not too bad. Yeah, you can get sub ten that mini game. It's uh, kind of tough. Not really worth uh, going fast and losing a bunch of time to save, you know, one second or something, whatever. Yeah, in other categories, you have to do it like ten times. It's uh, a little excessive. Um, the Troopa pin is nice for two reasons. It gives you um, the the attack half of a Geno boost just automatically at the start of the fight, and it also increases your speed by 20. Speed in SMRPG is just a sorting order. It doesn't affect how many turns you get. It doesn't affect how fast you run away or anything like that, but that is pretty important with how deterministic the data is and how tightly this game is routed. All right, so the Super Suit was put on Geno here, and uh, he's going to be the primary damage dealer. Uh, especially uh, this run, because we're not going to be using Ice Bomb in the third phase, I believe. Uh, here, ooh, that was a missed time. This is going to be a little bit tricky, actually. That's fine. Yeah. Ide ideally, uh, Bowser and Mario's attack uh, take out that first Smilax, but uh, yeah, Hurley Gloves, a little bit annoying to time, especially on uh, the Smilax there. To so be using uh, Physicals for the uh, first few phases, then we're going to be using, uh, I think, just yeah, one Ice Bomb because we're so low. The rest. Oh, we're down one from yard of it, so. Oh, yeah, that's none. right. We have none. Okay. This would be a very long fight then. Hey, here, ideally, we just use an ice bomb. We're just going to have to use physicals. Yeah, not very good freebie luck today, which is unfortunate. The cake was nice, and we used up our good luck there, I guess. Ooh. Oh, Mar is the only uh, character in this uh, fight that is vulnerable to status effects, so. Paul and Nappa hitting him is very unlucky. I want Koopa to end this turn anyway. Yeah, Bowser's uh, safety ring and Geno's super suit make them both immune to all status effects and all elemental damage. Mario's got none of that, though. Yeah. It's... Oh! Okay, that's good. Yeah, look him up. We could have put the uh, attack scarf on uh, Mario, we so choose, but it's better to have the experience booster on him to, uh, again, gain his level for the uh, late game. Not used to timing the Bowser's Hurley gloves on these guys. It's pretty <laughs> awkward. Yeah. That is already a pretty awkward attack to time. You have to hit it somewhere mid flight for Mario. I don't know. No. Yeah, not even close. Yeah, but, I, uh... <laughs> I didn't remember the amount. Oh, see you, Mario. Uh, again, yeah, he's not normally uh, supposed to do this trend. Normally, he's supposed to use an ice bomb to take out this phase, but we're so low that uh, not much else we can do here. Uh, Mega Smilex always uses a uh, pedal blast on his uh, first turn here. It's scripted, but again, uh, both characters are immune to the mushroom status effect thanks to the super suit and the safety ring.
unfortunately, because the Super Stew is so overpowered, it's basically impossible to get a game over. Geno is just too powerful. So even though this fight's going to be very, very, very slow, uh, we're going to be perfectly fine just getting through it. Yeah, the suit makes a lot of stuff in this run um, game over proof, pretty much. Even if you do lose time to it. Second Shuttle Blast, fun. rarely Rare, seen. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing we could do, though. Yep. See you, Bowser. Yeah, but again, Gino has so much defense, that doesn't matter. The yeah. fight's finally over. There you go. Who needs ice bombs? Just worst case scenario, coin flips. Yep. Okay. That should probably be the uh, the worst boss uh, going forward in terms of, you know, having bad freebie luck, since we do have the rock candy for Axum Rangers, and we'll have plenty of bombs for that fight as well later on. All right, coming up next is the uh, vines, kind of a tough platforming section. Just got to climb the vines as quickly as possible, pick up a few coins along the way to fix the uh, coin rattle just a little bit. And uh, yeah, hopefully it doesn't fall down. Movement on the vines like that is actually quite difficult. You have to twirl your D-pad quite a bit. But it is faster than just climbing straight up. That's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good vines, Mel. Nice, nice work. Right, yeah. Here we are in Nimbus, uh, aka Cutscene Town Part Two. That's fine. I need this. I need yeah. this. You need to <laughs> calm down a little bit. <laughs> this is uh, this is a really good time for donations if there are more. Yeah, sure. Uh, I just want to let you guys know about the things that you can donate towards. Uh, our next coming run for Pokemon Alpha, Sapphire, and Omega Ruby, you can name Grudon and Kyogre. Currently in the lead is, of course, Paraball. You can rename both of the lats. I uh, Can you name, can you call them both lats? Well, I'm, I'm going to do that. Lats. Uh, currently in the lead is Wednesday. Uh, you can also name Mudkip. Uh, currently in the lead is Budkip. And if you don't feel like naming any Pokemon, uh, later in the day, uh, our run of Valkyrie Profile, uh, there's an incentive to fight the Iseria Queen, the final boss of the post-game dungeon. We need about $300 to get there. I'm a big fan of Valkyrie Profile, so hope that gets met. All right, Mill's buying a few uh, uh, healing items here, but most importantly, he's buying the Mega Glove, which is uh, going to be Mario's final uh, weapon, actually, for the rest of the run. Mega Glove does a decent amount of damage, but more importantly, also has a very fast attack animation. There's going to be a lot of punching with Mario moving forward here. While we're in another cutscene, um, I just want to say that if anybody in the chat is interested in learning this as a speedrun, we've seen a lot of pretty scary things in this run today, like 100 super jumps and uh, Rock Candy Manips on Knife Guy, Great Guy. I promise you, they look pretty hard, but anyone can learn how to do them. Just go to smrpgspeedruns.com and you can learn everything you need to know to speedrun any percent SMRPG. I'm notoriously not good at video games, and even I can super jump after just putting enough practice into it. You can do it too. If you want to pick up this game, that's where you want to go. You should also go there anyway, in case you're curious about any timed hits that you could never do as a kid. We have every single timed hit in the game documented. And also just shout outs to everyone in the SMRPG community for putting that resource together and making it so much easier uh, to learn SMRPG runs in 2023. Yeah, like, I'm the primary router for this game, but there's been, like, a ton, ton of contributions from, like, so many people throughout the years that, you know, it's basically the the run you see here is just a product of, like, everyone's uh, hard work throughout the past, like, 10, 15 years, however long uh, people have been running 8%. Claude even put my name in the face, but even though I didn't do any routing because I made the damage calculator. <laughs> it was very, that damage calculator is super important. Otherwise, I just have to, you know, figure everything manually. Just play in a million save states. Yep. Yeah. 
anyone in chat wants a donation ride, this is a really good time to donate because um, this is level four of cutscene heck. We're going to be seeing a lot of cutscenes in Nimbus Land. A lot of cutscenes. Yeah. The remake comes out, please. Let's skip cutscenes, please. <laughs> I can go ahead and mention the Yeti. RPG Limit Break is proud once again to partner with the Yeti to bring you six awesome t-shirts that are now available. And one of them just happens to be an amazing Super Mario RPG shirt. Head on over to the yeti.com slash RPG Limit Break. Take a look at the designs. Pick up the ones you want and know that $5 from every t-shirt will be donated to NAMI. Remember, the Yeti is spelled Y-E-T-E-E. -E. That's the Yeti.com slash R-P-G-L-B. That SMRPG shirt on the Yeti is actually really nice. Um, my boyfriend heavily implied that he got it for me for my birthday, so I'm excited to get that when I get back to Canada. We're not going to be seeing Kulex today, but the design for the Kulex fight on that shirt is really cool. Yeah, Paige originally wasn't going to come to this event, but I told her I submitted this game and... She instantly booked a flight from Toronto, Canada. Yeah. Um, so instantly. As it, as it turns out, um, <laughs> I was actually able to expense a lot of my flight costs to get here, so it ended up like being a very viable thing. I wasn't going to miss this for the world. Yeah, same here. All right. All right, coming up next is another mini game, the uh, Dodo mini game. This one's uh, pretty easy. You just have to avoid getting caught. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're going to have to do a small mini-boss fight, which hopefully we'll not see. And uh, assuming we win the game, we're going to be getting uh, an item called the Feather, which increases our speed, which will be used in uh, just one fight. But yeah, this one's uh, pretty straightforward. <laughs> you can jump here. As long as the uh, Dota <laughs> doesn't see you, it's all good. This is one of the best parts of the game, like, hands down. I love Dodo. Mills just gotta, he's just gotta jump over Dodo's beak whenever he pulls his head back and his helmet slides over his eyes and he can't see you jumping over him. He gets a little suspicious, but he's not really paid enough to investigate further. end of Dodo's beak is red. We might need that later. Yes, True. that will be important. <laughs> <laughs> I've got $10 here from Edward Mollis. How many donations would it take to do some Yoshi racing? How much? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go through, uh... oh, gosh. $419. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-four, thirteen. Thirty-four, thirteen. That's that's, that's a, good, a that's a good, good number. number. Good number. <laughs> Chat wants you to Yoshi race so bad. <laughs> Thirty-four, thirteen dollars. <laughs> now, if you want to see some hardcore Yoshi racing, go watch a low-level run. It is extremely important in low-level. That category kind of had a renaissance last year and this year. Um, world Record was broken for the first time after like seven, eight years. Um, new routes are a thing. New manips are a thing. It's For some, low level is just like the hot thing now. All right, so we're actually uh, playing the game here now. It's doing a small dungeon, picking up a key, progress with the rest of the game. Just log on her head. Sorry. <laughs> have a quick save here. Uh, dodging the enemies in this uh, dungeon can be a little bit tricky here, especially the upcoming uh, heavy troopa. I'm gonna have to like slide past them a little bit. Oh, not very nice. Okay. Nice. And uh, coming will be the next boss, Birdo. <clears throat> you can miss this egg. Stationary egg. It's possible. <laughs> All right, so the fight uh, proceeds in two phases. The first phase, you just have to break open the egg, which we do to just uh, doing physical attacks, which don't have to be timed. As long as you're stealing sufficient damage, the egg will crack. And then we're also going to be boosting Mario's attack in order to do uh, damage to the second phase. Um, the way the second phase works is that uh, it's uh, you don't want to attack with too many characters at once. You want to attack with as few characters as possible so Birdo doesn't do a 
uh, an extra attack, which is waste time. So Mara is going to be our primary damage dealer for all this until the last phase. She has um, very high defense, and uh, like Claude was saying, you don't want to attack with too many characters because there is an attack counter where she'll start shooting a second egg at you that incurs some extra dialogue and also is unblockable um, with the timed hit. You have to be already defending to block it, and it does like massive damage to anyone who's not wearing the super suit. So, yeah. damage rolls are actually very important here. Mill attacked with a Bowser, which is not normally done because he saw he got poor rolls, and uh, yeah, that was enough damage. So that was probably a yeah good attack with Bowser. Not sure if that was made a difference, but better be safe than sorry. Yeah, you want to take her out before she can start firing those solo unblockable eggs at you, and uh, we did exactly that. And coming through this fan skip here, tough enemy skip. Got nice. It. And the forky. Oh, nice. Thanks. Well done. That fan skip is very, very precise. Jumping um, at just the right angle to get past him. Yeah. Mill just makes it look easy. I think I hit that fan skip like maybe one out of every five times. Oh, I've been missing it. <laughs> All right, coming up will be another invincibility star. This one will be a little bit different in this route, but not by much. Uh, Mill's going to backtrack and uh, take out one extra blue bird compared to normal in order to uh, raise his experience up uh, yeah, for the overall party uh, level. It's important that he doesn't get too much experience though, because that will going to mess up uh, Peach learning another ability later on in the run. So we just need to get the perfect amount so everyone's just uh, caught back up. Uh, yeah. This is a very easy invincibility star, unlike some of the other ones we've seen, so yeah, there's no worries about failing it or anything. I love the dialogue in this game so much. <laughs> Dodo's peacing out. Big save here. Yeah, mostly for Valentina, I suppose. That's fine. Yeah. And yeah, not quite optimal. Did want to go back and uh, take out one extra blue bird in this experience wrap, but we could just get lucky on the next invincible star and it won't matter. And this is actually optimal. <laughs> yeah, Mill was doing a couple of setups to get uh, good movement to dodge the blue birds in that room because, like, the later in the game you go, um, the more under leveled you are in the super jump route, and sometimes it can just be annoying and maybe a little bit scary to get into encounters, but. I guess they're scary and level there's, than there's, this. There's always a pack of four and they attack so slow. Yes, mm -hmm. big time loss for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we were on a perfect experience round until that though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all right. Again, it's not a big deal. Again, this is actually faster if we get lucky. It is so. perfect. Yeah. All right, coming up in the next boss is Valentina and Dodo. The fight will be divided into three phases. Uh, first one will be a, a character fighting Dodo by themselves. Uh, Dodo always takes away the middle character, which is going to be Bowser in this case, because Bowser is the tankiest character. Uh, second phase will be Mario and Gino versus Valentina, and then they're going to team up, and the whole team will be uh, fighting uh, both of them. So uh, optimal way to take out this fight is just to use a firebomb and a physical attack, but uh, we've been kind of low on freebies here. Uh, so we're probably just going to use, uh, yeah, the bad mushroom. So this is actually pretty interesting. So Dodo's, uh, you know, that freebie's completely useless. Uh, Dodo's uh, max hit points is actually uh, 1,000, but the second part of the, part of the fight starts uh, when he takes 400 damage. Because poison damage is based off of the uh, boss's uh, uh, current HP, poison ends up being very good for this fight because it just ends up doing a, a lot of damage over time in order to uh, fight it quick, or defeat him quickly. Otherwise, you just have to use a bunch of uh, slow physical attacks. Yeah, the Dodo fight is the only scary part of the fight. The uh, rest of it is pretty easy. Valentina's uh, physical defense isn't the best, so we're just going to be using uh, physical attacks for the rest of the fight.
And uh, what uh, Valentina does can influence your time a lot. You just wanted to use physical attacks the entire fight because all of her spells are very slow. We're not actually concerned about the damage our characters take or anything like that, although if we get very good damage rolls, we could skip one of her turns, but that's just a small optimization. Yeah, I guess a physical, that's what you want to see. Ooh, that's huge. I'm going yeah. for it. You're going for turn skip? All right. So the idea here uh, normally is that you just defend with the other... Oh, you got it. Very nice. Nice. Great rolls. That's huge fast. Hit. And normally you just defend with uh, Bowser and Geno towards the end of the fight, but uh, if you see you have enough damage, you just attack with them and skip one of Valentina's turns, which yeah, he did. That was great. Yeah, I mentioned at the start of the run that SMRPG's damage is very deterministic and there's no RNG on spells. Uh, physical attacks while you have a weapon equipped is actually the only source of damage RNG in SMRPG's battle system. So that's why you can have like uh, roll ranges like we saw there. Yeah, it's just on uh, character attacks, not on the enemy's physical attacks. It depends on yeah, what weapon you have uh, equipped. If you have no weapon at all, there is no randomness, right? Yeah, and unarmed is always like static damage. Mm -hmm. That fight has large variance in luck, just based off her attacks. The slap is like two seconds, and all spells are like 10 plus seconds. Yeah. Running this game at a high level, you know, stuff like that matters a lot. If, uh, if there's any more donations, this is a good time for them. This is one of the longer cutscenes in the game. RPG Limit Break 2023 is coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. We are raising money for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which was formed in 1979 as a grassroots advocacy organization by a group of parents whose children suffered with serious mental illnesses. And NAMI has maintained that focus to this day. I want to show some love for some community artists, LLK, who designed the RPG Limit Break logo, and Mega Weasel and It's Casa, who are responsible for some of the emotes that you gain access to by subscribing to the channel. All revenue from subs and the ads we run will help us run future RPG LB marathons, but fret not, 100% of the donations go straight to NAMI. And I just want to shout out the Yeti once again, because there is a Super Mario RPG t-shirt available. That's Y-E-T-E-E. -E -E dot com slash rpgl break and the yeti are donating five dollars for every shirt sold right to nami it's an incredible shirt it's really good artwork is great i can't wait to get it from sean for my birthday present <laughs> ten dollars from jish for dodo less than three nice block and mill I gave you an extra one too, thanks for the five bucks. <laughs> also, just a reminder, we've got stuff you can put your money towards. You can name a whole bunch of Pokemon coming up in the Pokemon race. You can put your money towards an incentive of fighting the Iseria Queen, the final boss of the post-game dungeon, in Valkyrie Profile Lenin. So this next part of the game, Barrel Volcano, this is like kind of similar to Booster Tower and that is just like a really fun platforming section. And it's also gonna be an Invincibility Star coming up. Uh, uh, it's gonna be one of the more random ones in terms of the enemies you can get. The more enemies you get, the better here unlike some of the earlier ones. We're also gonna be setting up the move swap glitch again here in order for Peach to learn Genoblast. It's gonna be very, very powerful uh, AOE magic damage uh, attack. So, um, Mill just needs to get a minimum of eight enemies here, but hopefully he gets a nine plus, so it's nope. a bad drops with the uh, uh, spiny enemies there. Uh, but it's fine, yeah, you got the uh, minimum amount. Now, a uh, character looks like uh, Gina was actually Peach, and she did learn Gina Blast, which we'll be seeing uh, here actually somewhat shortly. If your EXP star ends while you're in the lava pit, it's uh, one of the only points in the game where you can go out of bounds, and it has absolutely no practical implications on speedrunning at all. Oh. Sorry, Mario. Yeah, it's actually uh, somewhat optimal to try and get the last enemy there in that room where the star runs out, the Pyrosphere for the ninth enemy, but it's very difficult and requires very good movement. And if you go for that, uh, you will end up setting up that glitch. 
Now there are some unavoidable and uh, some unescapable encounters in here that Mill's gonna try to. Um... Oh yeah, here comes the pink, pink Gino. Gino. <laughs> that that glitch is, is pretty awesome um, because of the way that attacks uh, spells are coded in SMRPG is that. Um, it, it just draws an object over another object, so it just draws a Geno sprite over Peach, but doesn't change the palette with a certain command that it applies to make that spell animation happen. Um, and that's why you end up seeing a Geno with Peach's palette. Now, in this, um, coming up soon, Mill's going to be doing a very minor movement uh, trick, the stump at Skiff. If you in, run into the stump, it, it's unescapable oh. oh but but at this point because mill has done um both skill swaps the exp route is no longer really super important anymore um getting uh, this the skill swap is very predicated on your exact exp configuration for your party but they've both been done so any changes to the exp routing at this point is just minor adjustments and not like <laughs> will break the run. This is actually kind of a good thing, too, because he didn't get that uh, other blue yeah, bird, the Nimbus yeah. Star, so this just fixes everything for the late game, so there won't be any uh, weird stuff. That's true. Oh, oh no, he's oh, doubling. No. Oh. Is he doubling <laughs> low level? Yo, uh, okay, oh. so we got double, <laughs> that double our coins. And we got a Fright Bomb. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Level 15 Mario. There, there you go. Intentional. Yeah, actually, ended up working out pretty well, funnily <laughs> enough. Somewhere right now, I or Pi just thought about low leveling. He doesn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, same for uh, the next boss. Good idea here. All right, this will be the mighty Czar Dragon. So yeah, this is uh, one of the most uh, annoying fights in the entire run. It's a fight that goes much faster if you have ice bonds, which you do, we do not. So what's going to happen here is we're just going to do an attack with Mario uh, to start off because he's not boosted. And we're going to boost Mario as soon as possible. And um, then we're going to have to do super jumps. Looks like our FP is a little bit low, though. I think you forgot to yeah, use the uh, FP restoral item. Maybe use that right now? No? Oh, okay. We don't, normally, we don't use one. You, you know, use uh, Geno Whirl and... Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have enough for uh, super jumps? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Fine. yeah, good point. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Now, if it's you get lucky with freebies, you normally have a couple of ice bombs to use here, but we're saving those for Axum Rangers. I'll use this here. Yeah. All right. Uh, Zara Drag is actually doing the best thing he can do, which is a flame wall. It's a fast animation. doesn't do too much damage here. And uh, Super Jump in this guy is pretty tough. I'll explain why after. Uh, not quite enough. So Zara Dragon's like hitbox like oscillates. So super jumping is not really consistent when you press the button. Man. What's he doing here? Flame wall again. Again, that's the best thing he can do. So we're getting pretty lucky here. He can do a physical, which ends up spawning uh, like orb enemies, which is uh, pretty slow. He can do a fear-inducing move, which is also very slow, which also causes the orbs to be spawned. But yeah, we just saw flame wall, so that was pretty fortunate. And now into the Zombone phase, which is the second part of the fight. Uh, Zombone is a lot easier because he's uh, pretty weak to physical damage. So we're just going to be uh, punching him out and possibly using uh, Ultra Jumps to uh, end the fight. And Mar again, Mara is immune to most things because of the Super Suit and the uh, Attack Scarf, so not too much that can be done to him. That was our first use of uh, Ultra Jump, which is a... Uh, it's like Super Jump, but it can target multiple enemies. He used it there on the uh, Zombone, even though it's just one enemy, because it's a little bit better uh, DPS on enemies that are weak to jump, which Zombone is. Yeah, we normally don't use Ultra Jump for very much, because the time between jumps is slower, and also um, the ultimate frame window to land Ultra Jumps is two frames instead of three. Super Jumps are a little bit more reliable overall, and uh, but for some 
extenuating circumstances like Zombo and Ultra Jump gets the job done. Yeah, you don't actually go into the hard part of the Ultra Jump uh, frame window there, so which makes it uh, pretty good. Yeah, Super Jump caps off at a three frame window or 1 20th of a second after 13, and Ultra Jump caps off at two frames or 1 30th of a second after 18 jumps. And the reason why he did ultra jumps there instead of continuing the physical is that uh, Zara ha or Zombone has a pretty slow attacks and he can also counter attack. So by doing ultra jumps and taking him out in uh, one last turn just makes it a little bit more consistent, though not faster if he Zombone decides to use the physical there. I've got $10 here from Keeper Don't Care. Uh, excuse me, Mill, you've been leveling up? This run's invalid. <laughs> Shoutouts to Kuiper. Known low level speedrunner, Kuiper Don't Care. Coming up next will be the Axum Rangers. This is uh, why we needed to keep that rock handy from the Knife Guy, Great Guy, Manette earlier. Uh, we're going to be attacking uh, this boss primarily with attack items. The rock handy is extremely important because it's the only item that can damage uh, all the Rangers because some of them have like immunities to certain elements, so Firebomb and Ice Bomb won't hit all of them. And uh, depending on what happens here, we might also be seeing more Ultra Jumps because it's just uh, one of the best ways to damage all the Rangers at once. That's uh, not a very difficult fight, but it is uh, somewhat technical, especially once we get to the second phase of the fight. A rock candy freebie here is very, 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 very good. But never lucky. Yeah, rock candy makes this phase of the fight like basically trivial. Yeah, this is why we were saving our bombs here, even though we could have used an ice bomb and fire bomb earlier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, who the uh, ultra jump lands on is random. You just need to land on each ranger once, which really isn't a, a large ass there, but it's, it's looking pretty bad. We're about to enter the uh, the tough uh, frame window there, and we hadn't let, yet landed on Axum Red, so that was a little bit scary, but uh, we made it. Yeah. Again, there are definitely faster ways of doing this fight, but again, it depends on having uh, spare uh, freebies to use. Milta, or Mario took some damage there, so he's going to have to heal him up there in order to survive the uh, boss's uh, second phase. But the uh, rest of the fight is very straightforward as long as you can uh, perfect time all the attacks. Axum Rangers, uh, like Yuridovich, is one of the fights that it's like. SMRPG is a fairly easy casual game, but then Axums and Yuridovich are just like a little bit harder. Uh, with Axums, you just have an onslaught of attacks, and uh, Breaker Beam there is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, AoE spell in the game. Yeah, Bowser actually has the super suit equipped for this fight just to be able to tank uh, Breaker Beam. Oh, great. 248. Nice. That's the lowest roll, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is, uh, Three times in a row. Guaranteed to uh, take out the, yeah. uh, the ship, as long as you perfect time everything. So Ooh. it'd be very scary, though, if you miss time and attack and Breaker Beam is going to take out both characters, and then it's a game over. So that's, that's why we got the red essence. Yep. Which, which level up there is weird. Yeah, it's not right. a lot of experience. <clears throat> oh, yeah, flashing light warning. I'm probably a little bit too late, but. Uh, The European release of SMRPG on Virtual Console actually spaces out the flashes a bit more for that reason, but for, I don't think the North American VC release does that. I dimmed it completely, I think, on our VC. Oh yeah, that's right, it does use a different color. 
which is um, the lazy shell ROM editor actually doesn't know what that is and it fails to load scripts <laughs> when you extract the VC copy into it. <laughs> Just be heading back to the throne room here to advance the story a bit more. This camera manip is uh, very important coming up. This could save like maybe 20, 30 frames or more. Go all the way to the right. <laughs> it starts immediately. Huge. Yeah, getting that free star piece on Star Hill a while back is like deceptively free because it comes right before two other star pieces that you get and then are stolen from you and you have to get again. You want to talk about the manip? Oh uh, yeah, sure. We can do that right now. So yeah, uh, coming up is going to be a section where we enter, uh, re -enter Bowser's Keep and in that uh, dungeon is going to be random doors and uh, within those random doors, it's possible to get battle doors, which take a very, very long time to do. So we want to try and avoid those. So we're going to do an RNG manipulation setup here, uh, starting right now. We're going to save here. This is not a safety save. This is actually in the route in order to manipulate the doors. Be uh, saving, resetting, and then uh, trying to advance the text that starts the uh, cutscene to go to Bowser's Keep. And if we do it correctly, we'll know the uh, order in which to enter the doors to avoid the battle doors and it's a five frame window I think on uh, English uh, Yeah, so Mill has to do a different version of the minute compared to what he's used to because again We're playing on English and it's dependent on the uh, the text we see here. So uh, hopefully he gets it There's gonna be a visual cue for this one look at the clouds in the background So it's a uh, fortunately it's not an audio one like a uh, knife guy great guy and we'll know if we get it in approximately like three, three to four minutes or so. You got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have no. Idea. I have no idea what the English manip is like, so uh, I'm just gonna have to take your word for it. We'll see soon. Yeah. Out of the three of us, Mill's the only one who really knows the English manip. <laughs> yeah. There's like uh, so much stuff, especially in this section that's gonna be coming up, where it's just like, okay, you have to do it completely different for the English version of the game, which is pretty much only used for marathons. So. That was an extreme confident. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Find out if door two is uh, not coin box, then no, we do not get it. All right, so we're finally back here in uh, Bowser's Keep. It's a little bit different than how I remember it. Just more powerful enemies. Music's a little different too. Tricky. Can't that really Goomba, see there, so. That Goomba who just jumps off the side is like <laughs> my favorite enemy in this game. All right, let's find out if we actually did the manipulation correctly. That's uh, possible. Looking good, yeah, looking good so far. We'll know for sure later. Oh, oh tutorial. <laughs> Finally got a tutorial. It's okay though. One of the shorter ones. Want to explain this uh, mini game page? Yeah, this mini game is pretty straightforward. Um, there's 21 coins in the box. Whoever takes the 21st one loses. You have to take anywhere between one and four every turn. So, pretty much like if you just count how many coins have been taken and you always stop on a multiple of five, like you're guaranteed to win. It's, uh, it's faster if he takes fewer coins because he jumps slower than Mario does. Now this one... Uh, this one's I mean, a little bit easier. Yeah, he just this one explains itself a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now here's a fun one, ball solitaire, where um, you kick a ball over another ball to make that second ball disappear. And I think it was Kurt Q that found the most optimal path for this. Yeah, I believe a computer program was used to figure out the optimal path. Yeah. There's a bunch of different ways you can solve this puzzle. You know, it's your classic logic puzzle, but um, I think that he wrote some kind of Lewis script to figure out what the fastest possible path was. Mm -hmm. Remembering puzzles is the hardest part. It's yeah. true, I agree. <laughs> if, if, you need, if you need me to bail you out on any quiz questions, just let me know. <laughs> All right, speaking of which, yeah, here's the quiz. In. Blue. Uh, la di da? Middle one. Yeah, it's light, light. That one's nice. tricky. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We spent so much time practicing the Japanese quiz um, because all the quiz questions that he gives you come from a pool of 40 random ones, so you really have to know what you're selecting. Um, that we never practiced the English one. It's yep. actually pretty Kaizo. <laughs> uh, this is just a uh, counting puzzle here. This one's pretty easy because... Um, let's make sure he gets it before I explain why it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Basically, you just uh, you already know the the set number of barrels, and then Topper just adds uh, new ones, which are colored a little bit differently. So you just uh, add the uh, ones that are, look a little bit different to the base amount, and then it's pretty easy. I actually have a hard time telling them apart, so I just have my own method of counting them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what this one is, but you know I don't want to be wrong and ruin everything. So <laughs> yeah, forty-five. There's 43 base, and yeah, there's two barrels that look different. We did it, gamers, we can count. Yeah. Now, the triathlon, again, this is also something that's just tougher on English because, you know, you don't normally play on English, so hopefully Mill gets this as well. Or two, right? Everyone's second place? <laughs> You tell me, Mel. Did you know? What? Dry bone second place. Came in third in swimming. That's fourth. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh. Mm, this isn't right. I totally missed. I can, we, can we try again? Are you sure? No. Wait, let me think about it. <laughs> you could have said, wait, let me think about yeah. it. No, wait. <laughs> is it actually like Yes, there's an option to just redo it. Yeah. I've never missed that in my life. <laughs> All right, quiz round back, two. Back to the quiz. I hope yeah, that this triathlons time, are hard. I hope that this time we see the fish say that he came in third for swimming. Quick tutorial here. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That was important. <laughs> Top one. Yeah. <laughs> you scared me, Mill. Yes, we saw a different sequence of questions there. They're all just pulled randomly from a pool of 40. I think that some are more likely to appear than others, um, but he can really trip you up sometimes. All right, who's ready to count barrels again? A lot of extra barrels. Yeah, that is that's a lot of barrels. That's an unusual upper bound. I don't know if I've ever seen 16 barrels yeah, on the first one. A lot. That's pretty rare. Oh, this, yeah, it's the same as last time. 13 more seconds. Think about the triathlon again. <laughs> focus, Mill. Focus. You got this. Fourth. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, we've done it. Impossible puzzle. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> that should fortunately be the end of uh, English exclusive stuff, which again, you know, Mill has uh, very little experience with. <laughs> First time uh, really playing the game in English in like how long? Like not since you're casual, like fifteen long years ago. Yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah, I just want to stress again that we everyone just plays this game in Japanese. So stuff like that's actually tough when you're doing a marathon <laughs> run, have to play in English. Yeah, all the resources that we made for learning this game um, are written so that you can do it in either version. You don't really have to like read it in English and then think too hard about what it is in Japanese. It's just written there for you. Mm -hmm. Possible to skip a Donkey Kong there. It saves a few seconds, but it's kind of tough. So, okay. I also have a confession. Up... I've never learned how to do that trick. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> needed. We also picked up the uh, Super Slap there, which will be uh, Princess Peach's uh, first and final weapon, actually. And ideally, it'll only be used in one fight only. But it is uh, worth picking up. Didn't you freebie the Caro? Now we have two Caros. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes a man just gets thirsty. Yep. So this cannonball room is pretty interesting. You're getting a rock candy, but also you're going to have to jump off the cannonball in a specific way in order to set up a wrong warp later on in the game. It's very strange that it works like this. And uh, hopefully you got it there. Like a okay dismount. We'll talk more about that when it actually comes up. But yeah, how you dismount that cannonball there is uh, pretty important. You could save a few seconds. Time for donations in this room. We want to send out our thanks to the people involved in our forage language, foreign language restreams. Our French restream can be found at twitch.tv slash le French restream and our Japanese stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them some love. RPG Limit Break is also grateful to LLK, a longtime contributor to GDQ Marathons and the designer of our promo banners, attendee badges, and emotes. Go check out her work at jazzaboo.com. That's J-A-Z-A-A-B-O-O.com. I'm sorry, Claude. In that final chest <laughs> day, uh, you could have picked up a Caro Caraco because we freebied the one in Eurovic, but we didn't need it. And yeah, Mill just picked up these Sonic symbols there, which is a classic, classic mistake. That's the <laughs> weapon for Molo. And yeah, we're definitely not going to be using Molo uh, anytime soon. But it's okay. Just want Mill to stabilize. This is a very easy boss fight. Just uh, use the uh, the Fright Bomb there, because Magic Goop is a uh, weak to fear. And just uh, use physicals. I think I'll get us back on track. I guess I shouldn't say it was weak to physical, it just has low physical defense and very high magic defense, as you might imagine. Very straightforward, yeah. If you uh, do not uh, take out Magic Koopa in those rounds of attacks, you will summon something. You have to take out the summon, and it's very slow. So timing all your attacks there is uh, pretty important. It's Kamek from Yoshi's Island. This is everyone's favorite golden chest. Yeah. Infinite money. And by the time you get it, you don't no longer need money for the entire <laughs> run, so. And even if you did, there are far better ways of getting uh, coins than using that chest, because it only gives you one per hit. It was pretty smart of Croco to get out of the thieving game and just set up shop next to an infinite coin chest. And you also saw Mil go into his items there briefly. It's uh, item sort. Not sure if that was explained earlier, but whenever you just check your items in this game, it'll automatically sort them into a predetermined uh, arrangement. And you want to do that there because you just acquired a lot of items to, throughout the uh, the Bowser doors various attack items and uh, such. So uh, knowing where the items are can be very important as we head here into the late game. And coming up next is another boss fight versus uh, Boomer. Uh, Boomer, uh, you're just gonna open up with a jump because Mario does not start the battle boosted, of course. You're gonna have to boost him uh, manually with Geno. And then you're gonna be doing uh, super jumps. Be around uh, like 47 or so. High 40s, I think.
<laughs> it worked. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of Couple extra. extra. Yeah, no worries though. Oh, poor, poor Boomer Chan. He didn't deserve this. And he's a soldier. Prepared to go. He doesn't need my sympathy. That's all, folks. You'll be fine. Now, after that very touching scene, he let's dance. go to the appointed place and dance. <laughs> dance up this impossibly tall tower. It's getting even faster. That poor shy guy, though. Hold the chandelier up forever. Imagine how he feels after a low level run. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's cruel. Yeah, you want to explain this uh, boss fight, Pidge? Oh yeah, sure. Um, this next boss fight that's coming up is Exor. Um, so the way that Exor works is that you have to disable one of his two eyes in order to do, to do damage to the hilt. Exor has a lot of really powerful magic attacks that can be pretty threatening to your team. Um, however, if you disable... Uh, the eye, you get total vulnerability to everything. Yeah, which includes uh, the Time Gina Whirl, which is just an instant KO, 9999 nine, nine damage. Yeah. It's just a <laughs> pretty free fight. I want to see what attacks Exor actually has. You have to watch low level. That's uh, been the strat for that boss for as long as I can remember. Yeah, it was a Nintendo power, I think. Now we're in the giant sword's stomach. Yeah, this area is so cool. <laughs> yeah, so Claude was mentioning earlier that there is a wrong warp happening. That's going to be after the next boss fight. And uh, I'll, I'll just like set up some information by saying that when you ride the cannonball in Bowser's Keep, um, the cannonball gives you inverted controls. So the game's scripting has to keep track of what direction you're holding in order for it to know how to move the ball around. So it has to store the direction that you were facing. Um, the variable that stores the direction that you faced doesn't get used again between that room and the factory. And we will see the implications of that after the next boss fight. Yeah. The wrong warp and it won't be called otherwise. Seven whole seconds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some uh, tough platforming coming up here. It's possible to uh, fall down with a few seconds or get into some uh, nasty fights. But it's uh, not too long, fortunately. Taking the top path there is a little bit faster, but a little bit scarier because you risk uh, running that enemy. Oh, this one's better. <laughs> Another save? <All> right. <laughs> Never be too safe. It's closer. And this chest is the Ultra Hammer. We're actually be skipping that. Even though it would be nice to do more damage than Mario, the animation of the Ultra Hammer and the time it costs to equip it is just not worth it, so it is skipped. All we need is the Mega Glove. Yeah, most of what Mario's going to be doing in the late game is based around Super Jumps anyway. All right, so this is Countdown. This is another uh, very random fight, probably the uh, most random fight uh, in the end game. We're going to be opening up with Ultra Jumps here just to try and uh, damage all the components. Then we're going to be primarily fighting with uh, rock candies. We're using uh, three rock candies total, I believe. And you want to use that with uh, Bowser if possible, because Bowser is the one that's boosted, so he'll be doing 300 damage compared to a uh, 200 with Geno. Ooh, this is a good start. Is that the perfect opening? As long as it doesn't hit no, Bowser. Oh. Uh, miss? Oh. No. Nope. That was almost a perfect opening. Yeah, we're going to have to do a. Uh, a lot of ultra jumps. Now the two bells can do some pretty nasty things to you, so for them to both do physicals is just a blessing. Yeah. Even if it was kind of ruined by the ice rock on Bowser, which is one of the worst case scenarios you can get in round one. Yeah, it's uh, the other two characters just immune to elemental damage, and 
Okay, Dark Star, if it hits Bowser, it's fine because uh, it would survive at one hit point. All right, there we go. This is part of why we took uh, hit points on, unless Double it hits him again. Uh, it, not, nothing Gino can do there. But yeah, all the uh, HP levels we took on uh, Bowser there were just so we can survive Dark Star with one hit point. Because, yeah, the, the dingling attacks are very nasty. So you want to be able to tank those if possible. Now we've entered the, the, the dinglings are gone now. Just a countdown. Yeah, it's already over. It's just like that. So it's, you know, kind of a bad start, but we covered pretty well. It's the second most terrifying fight in this run. Mm -hmm. If you take out the clock before the bells, you lose a bunch of EXP. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this section will feature the wrong warp and some more enemy dodges against some uh, tight platforming here to try and uh, dodge the uh, infernal machines coming up. All right, right here, it's gonna fall off on purpose, come back up, and we're at the end of the screen. There you go, that is a wrong warp. Um, the, the same variable that I was talking about earlier that stores the direction you last faced on the cannonball is also used for uh, storing which checkpoint in that room you last used. So if you never step on the conveyor belt, you never activate any of the checkpoints. So it reuses the value from facing downward on the cannonball and just assumes that your last checkpoint in the room was at the end of the room. That was a fairly recent find and it saves about, what is it, eight seconds? Somewhere in there, yeah. That is the only wrong warp in SMRPG so far. Wait, what? It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Need a uh, like forty more damage or so. Oh. oh. Might be enough, yeah. I lost count. Got him. Claude, do you remember who found the wrong warp? Alan. Uh, no, it was some. Somebody found someone it doing randomly. a casual playthrough. So is that stuff gets found speedruns? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was, he was doing a he was doing a speedrun and he just accidentally did it. Uh. Yeah, we didn't talk about it much, but as machine made Eurovic, uh, you have to uh, fight one of those to proceed on. Super jump's just the fastest way to take him out. If you have a few uh, extra like freebies there, you can also use a bomb to uh, do less super jumps. But uh, yeah. Next up is Cloaker and Domino. So uh, Cloaker is uh, strong against physical, weak to magic. Domino is the opposite, weak to physical, strong against magic. We're going to be taking out Domino, the one on the right, so that uh, Cloaker teams up with the uh, boss of the second phase. We'll be using magic attack to take that out. Yeah, Cloaker and Domino, depending on which one you take out first, will team up with the Giant Snake. And the Giant Snake's weaknesses and resistances reflect uh, Cloaker and Domino. So Cloaker will team up with a snake that's um, weak to magic, resistant against physical, and Mad Adder uh, would be Domino Snake, which has the opposite. Um, Mad Adder you would see in other runs, like most of the stuff, um, but in this category we just wanted to super jump the snake for Cloaker and call it a day. There's a rare uh, miss time there on Gino's uh, physical attack. If you want to take him out, uh, that uh, extra round of attacks happening. But it doesn't matter. We made it here. And yeah, the strategy for this uh, next boss, Earthlink, is just going to be uh, super jumps. Because again, yeah, very uh, vulnerable to magic attacks. And if we do super jumps, we can skip uh, all the uh, boss's attacks. So simple as that. Not quite, probably like halfway there, so. So we're gonna have to go into the round. Oh, that's not. 
be close. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, super jumping on Earthlink actually is kind of hard because there's so much happening on the screen in this battle that it introduces a little bit of lag. And uh, it's not like a huge amount of lag, but when you're landing a timed hit uh, consecutively, that is a 1 20th of a second. Like every change in your rhythm matters. All right, so we put Peach back in the party. This will be the final party for the rest of the game. Uh, Mario, Gino, Peach. Peach is put in because, again, she has Gino Blast. And there's going to be a lot of attacks that will require AoE magic damage. The uh, Gino Blast here is just going to one shot the mallets. I've got a Gino Blast t shirt on right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's the wrong character casting it, but you know. <laughs> Peach is a little bit better at using Geno Blast than uh, Geno is, <laughs> especially because we mostly uh, power up Geno's physical attack in this uh, run. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that um, Peach in this game was designed to be a support character up until the very end when she learns Psych Bomb, which she doesn't do in this run. And uh, I mean, and Geno in the speed run instead gets relegated to the most support character out of the three, but he still gets time to do attacks and stuff. You got a time for a donation here? Yeah. Uh, I've got $100 from Kevin O'Reilly saying RPG speedruns are what got me into speedrunning in the first place. Love what you all do. Keep up the great work. And that went to taking Barrett on a date in Chapter 14 in the Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade run. Nice. So here we meet Toad. He came all the way from the Mushroom Kingdom to help us out. He's going to give us a free rock candy as well as a, a shop. But we're not going to be using the shop, probably. The rock candy, always appreciated. Let's buy some items. Uh, yeah, safety items, yeah, always, yeah, always a good idea in a marathon. Again, you have no more use for coins at this point, so might as well. The yeah, last boss of this game can be very scary if things go wrong, so. Oh, we got plenty. Red Essence, two Caracolas. Yep. So again, here we'll be using a Geno Blast, both to do damage to the, uh, the mallet enemies as well as the uh, manager in the background. Manager does have a chance to counterattack, just waste a little bit of time, like there, you see there. But not a big deal. Because we are on experience, right, we're not going to need any uh, extra attacks from a Geno or anything like that. comes the haiku like, like the moon, the moon over, over the day, day. my genius and Ron, Ron are lost on these fools I could yeah that's not in the uh, Japanese version I'm pretty sure so it's definitely one of my favorite parts of uh, watching an English run and that was the last menu in the game Basically, we just made uh, Mario as strong as possible and uh, yeah, set up Gino and Peach for uh, support for the rest of the run. More super jumps coming up. Uh, is what you want to see there. 
because we'll be doing a uh, rock candy here for 300 damage. Director has 1,000 hit points. Easy peasy. This is a pretty bad fight to jump, uh, drop your super jumps early, actually. Yeah. Nice freebie. Yeah, nice freebie. It's been a while, actually. Yeah, um, dropping, uh, dropping super jumps on Director is specifically is quite bad because then he starts increasing his his uh, defense. He starts increasing his attack power and just does a whole bunch of really annoying stuff. Spritzer is like the strongest attack in the game. Yeah. One of them. Yeah, he has Spritz Bomb as well, which is one of the probably I think the strongest spell that uh, the strongest uh, physical special move that isn't Loco Express. Yeah, we also just got a level ups on uh, Bowser and Maul there, but there's no way to avoid those. We're not going to be using those characters. We did take the EXP booster off of everyone because we don't really want levels anymore. And now we're on to Gunyo. Remember that Sleepy Bomb we bought like hours ago? It's used for this fight, put them both to sleep. <laughs> we bought that in Tadpole Pond. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of different ways to do this fight depending on how many uh, items you have remaining. I'm not sure what uh, Variant Mill is going to be doing here, even how many freebies he has, but uh, trust him to make the right decision here. I think he's going with the variants that assumes you don't have uh, any freebies at all. Probably gonna hold on to that rock candy he got. Here's where we see the ice bomb's potential. It does so much damage against ice weak enemies. No, that's not. That's better. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different variants here. <laughs> I would recommend using. <laughs> okay. That's the. Yeah, I would recommend using an ice bomb with a boosted character. Probably take him out. I also recommend doing that. So fun to note there, Shocker is now on the second page of abilities. Uh, due to a glitch, it's going to cost the same amount of FP as the ability in the first page. You're not supposed to have uh, more than uh, one page of spells. So Shocker is only going to, co going to cost two FP, which is the cost of uh, Peach's therapy ability. Yeah, there's about six different strats there, and if I can't remember the triathlon, <laughs> yeah. we'll just... <laughs> We're so close to the finish line, just you can do whatever it takes to finish. The only time in my life that I've ever done a run of this game without notes was uh, when I was running a category where your strategy on gun yoke doesn't matter. Yeah, I usually, I usually have notes for that fight specifically. Yeah, there's like six or seven different strats, like you said. I play... There's a reason I play one of the baby RPGs. <laughs> This is a tough game to run at high level. I mean, it, any game yeah. is, of course, but... So we are now going into the final boss fight. Um, the final boss, uh, Smithy, is actually quite interesting. It's got two phases. The first thing that Mill is going to be doing is um, setting up some stat boosts with Geno Boost on his party and then uh, super jumping his way out and using one explosive to finish off the fight. You do that because um, your stat boosts actually carry over into the second phase, and the second phase is a lot more complicated, which you'll be seeing when we get there. It's also important that uh, Peach ends the fight in order to get as many turns as possible in the second phase of the fight. If he ends with Mario or Geno, he does not get as many turns. So it's uh, yeah, important that Peach ends it. It's going to be similar to the uh, the Boomer fight. Mars is going to get an attack off because he's not boosted, and then he gets boosted, and yeah, super jumps, save the day. Just as a heads up to um, our staff keeping track of the timer, um, we are going to be ending time when Smithy runs out of HP. There's about a million different ways this fight can go, so there's not going to be a whole lot of lead up to when we say time. Angry Blob. Seventy-seven super jumps.
What like, did me? Oh, I'll use a rock candy, I guess. I have enough. The freebies finally showed up. I was gonna use an ice bomb, so I needed more, but. Yeah, fine. Yeah, ending on Peach's turn is important here, like Claude was saying, because it guarantees that you start uh, the second phase of Smithy at a point where you can get uh, almost a thousand damage on him before he can really start doing anything to you. Yeah, uh, this phase two is gonna be pretty intense, so I guess we'll start talking about it now. So yeah, uh, the first uh, part of phase two, Smithy is gonna have an unformed head, which is gonna be a mediocre defense and magic defense. We're just gonna use physicals there because it's the best DPS. And then Mill is gonna be going to be attempting 100 super jumps on the next form, which is gonna be tank head. And then he's gonna be using a Caracola to heal and also restore his FP. He's gonna be using Shocker with Peach because uh, tank head is weak to thunder. And then he's going to be doing a certain amount of super jumps in order to do as much damage to Smithy as possible while still retaining the fact that his next uh, form will change to Chest Head, which is weak to fire, which will give us the best DPS with Mario's uh, super flame ability and also any fire bombs we picked up or still have. And uh, if anything goes wrong, it can be a little bit scary, but we do have the uh, safety item, so hopefully it goes well. Smithy as a fight, even outside of a speedrun, is very interesting just because his transformation pattern um, has a lot of float charting behind it. Yeah. Damage he needs to be needs to be very precise in order to him to switch the chest or the right head if he switches his heads at all, which is random. 50% chance. I wrote like an entire graduate thesis about this fight in low level. Yeah. Anyways, here it is. It's definitely not 100, but uh, hopefully Mill can recover. All right, Gino's gone, unfortunately. You have two chances. That's not fun. He's gonna try and make up the remaining super jumps here in the second uh, round. It's gonna be uh, an interesting fight. He's uh, he's over half health, uh, halfway to zero health, at least. All right, chest head. That's actually really good. It's a fifty percent chance for him to transform there. Oh. And again, this uh, form is weak to fire, so we're actually doing a pretty good DPS here. And that's a very nice. good freebie as well. Yeah, you want to use as much fire as you can against chest head, but this is the only formation that is guaranteed to transform after two turns, so you got to do what you can against him. Fire orb. Yeah. We played a little bit better on Booster Hill. We had enough for another super flame, but you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> it all comes back. It came, it comes it back. Came back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fine. I have an ice bomb. Yeah, what uh, head Smithy changes to now is random. Yeah. Now, you don't want to see this one because it's uh, tough to damage him in this phase. But again, we have uh, plenty of ice bombs, actually, so and he's weak to ice. Yeah, Mill's in the home stretch now. Smithy doesn't have that much health left. I'm going to pick Gino up and boost. Yeah, good, good idea, actually. Yeah, this is the phase of the fight where you're not likely to see two uh, safe heads in a row. So um, he always cast Shredder on the first turn, which dispels Gino boost. I was thinking uh, use Ice Bomb with Geno because he's boosted, right? But all good.
Kevlar. This is a fight where you really have to know what you're doing if anything goes wrong. You have to think on your feet and just take everything you know about this boss fight into account. Yeah. He is still uh, in this phase. <laughs> It's pretty unlucky for him to stay <laughs> yeah. this long. This this phase, like I think Claude mentioned, just has massive defense. Another boost from Mario, yeah. He's a uh, he I assume to use Shredder. I'm not used to watching this phase, but yeah, Shredder removes all uh, buffs you have, so Yeah, Safehead always uses Shredder on the first turn. Mm -hmm. Still in this phase. <laughs> but I don't think he uses it again unless he enters the transformation a second time. Are you ever gonna, there we go. Please don't transform the same thing he was just at. Okay, good. Chest go. head's really good. And we restored our FP, so this should probably be when time should be coming up, actually. Yeah. When the Super Flame finishes, most likely this will be time? I think so, but uh, yeah, we'll see. That's yep, time. Yep. <laughs> well done, Mel. Thank yep. you. Well you made it. You finished. I thought it's a scary speedrun in a marathon. I'm so proud. Now you know you know what's coming now though, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> I got practice just now. So this is a 12 minute cutscene that we would normally watch, but uh, we have a donation incentive for super jumps on an invisible enemy. That'd be fun. Yeah. We can go right into that. If you want to switch, we're going to switch carts. What an amazing run. And while we get set up for that incentive, I just want to remind everybody that you can vote with your wallet to do awesome things like name characters. Pokemon, in fact, coming up right after this. You can get our runners to complete difficult or ridiculous tasks like trying to super jump on an invisible enemy while getting eggs thrown at your head. Will that happen? I don't know. Or help pick which story you get to see in certain games. You can also become eligible to win prizes donated by community members and all donations go to NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. For more information, check the channel bio for a link to the 2023 tracker or type exclamation mark donate exclamation mark prizes in chat. One more reminder that RPG Limit Break is proud to once again partner with the Yeti to bring you six awesome t-shirts that are now available. Head on over to the yeti.com slash RPGLB, take a look at the designs and pick up the ones you want. And know that every five dollars from every t-shirt purchased will be donated to nami remember that yeti is spelled y-e-t-e-e -E -E. that's the yeti.com slash rpg lb and just a reminder that there's a really cool super mario rpg shirt featuring the coolix fight right over there and now with his incentive is milnium all right guys so I'm gonna, I'm putting up $100 of my own money and I'm gonna super jump on an invisible enemy and every jump I get, I'm gonna save myself $1. So um, I'm gonna give myself two shots, whatever the, uh, whatever the highest donation is, I'll, I'll, I'll give that. So um, I encourage y'all to maybe match me one penny for jump, 10 pennies for jump, you know? When do we start Put your money you? down. What's up? When do we start in? Oh, anytime you, you want. We're anytime gonna go. you want? Yeah, anytime you want. So we can say right whatever it. we want, just to try and yeah, distract you. Yeah, clear. yeah. All right. The crowd's gonna try to distract me because the less jumps I get, the more money I donate. So. Hey, Mill, remember that time when you were super jumping in the speed run? Isn't that so sick? Remember when you jumped on Johnny yeah. like at this point in the run? You know what I like? I like Call oh, Fancy three. Tactics. Call <laughs> Fancy Tactics is the best video game shot. ever made. I, mean, I love going to Orban <laughs> Monastery. I love it when Rad casts blind on on the enemies and there's like there's nothing you can do, it just wastes so much time. I love it when Gafgarion casts haste. You know how rare it is for Gafgarion to cast haste in that fight? It only happens in the North American version, by the way. Dude, Claude, look at look at when Mill jumped on Johnny. Wasn't that so sick? Is that it? it over? Hey, that was it. The first one was too short. I think that was thirteen. That's, that's eighty-seven dollars. <laughs> so, okay, we might look at that. 
that one. We mulligan. We mulligan? Right, do I get a little more chance? One, are we doing one no, more? No, okay. One more I'll do honest, one more. One more honest Mokura. All right. All right. This, Anyways, this back to Final Fantasy Tactics. Greatest mulligan. game ever made, by the way. Sometimes Agrius can also uh, use haste. I think she has time magic unlocked, right? No, no. No, she can also have yin yang mag. That's what it is. She has a use <laughs> blind just like Rab. It's much more rare, right? Rab's more likely to have it because, yeah, he has yin yang magic unlocked. Is that 13 or 14? <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a floating enemy as well. So it's hitbox. Do it moves, one more time. So. One more time. Uh, one more. One hey, more. One more. Please. One more. I mean, give the people what they want. Give the people what they paid two thousand dollars for. Yeah. Anyways, Dude. back to Orban Monster. You also got Lobby, you got Alicia. Sometimes Rob's like, oh my, you just <laughs> dropped again. Okay, right. one more, one more. No, no, no. One $86. More. Can, can I do $86 it? $86. Can me. I do it? Yeah, Fish can do one. Sorry, Are you right. putting your own money up? Uh, can we yeah, distract yeah, Fish? Is that legal? Yeah, go ahead. This is anyway, the big fun Back balls. to Orban Monster. Sometimes Rob's oh, yeah. can get his weapon yeah. broken. That's really messed hey, up. Hey, happy man. birthday, like, Fish. Happy birthday. He's just going to run backwards and just pass the Happy birthday. I did 16. Oh. <laughs> Are you donating $84? Uh, we'll uh. see. <laughs> All right. That's it for me. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. Super Mario RPG owned. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Play Super Toho RPG. Available now on Switch. Well done, everybody. Well done. Well, that does it for me at RPG Limit Break 2023. Uh, I am going to send it over to an ad and the next host, Laura Lady. But don't go anywhere. We're just 100 invisible super jumps away.
Oh, hey, welcome back to RPG Limit Break 2023. I will be your next host. My name is Laura Lady. I wanted to say thank you again to CC for hosting during the Super Mario RPG run that we just had. Those super jumps at the end were amazing. Just a few more minutes while we set up a interview with our next runners but I have a few donations that I need to read here. We had $10 from Anonymous that said, yo, Red, what? Here's $10. Thank you so much. We had another $100 that, fra that says 100 meows for a date with Barrett. Barrett is best boy. We have another $100 from the Burning Hunter that says, I was so distracted by the awesome distracting super jumps that I forgot to count. So here's a distracted donation of 100 distracting dollars. 